heat it up once again. The Aggies seem to have everything under control, rolling to a 16-0 lead. But Patel Troutman would bring the Wildcats back with a furious comeback. 18 unanswered points connecting with Antonio Stanley for the apparent game winner until the Aggies won it on a late field goal. It's homecoming in Greensboro, and the Aggies and Wildcats hope to get their kicks on MIAC College Football Saturday. It's the ultimate reunion type setting. It's homecoming in Greensboro, North Carolina, and everything is fine. I'm talking about Bethune Cookman coming in here with a perfect 7 0 record, undefeated the MEAC at 4 0, taking on the Aggies of North Carolina AT. All is on the line the MEAC title, Division I AA playoff spot. Who'll get it? We'll see. Yes, they're tailgating. They're cooking up some great meals. They're rooting it on, but we've got a sizzling game, and we're ready for you because this game has put up a shut up, but it's also going to be off the hook. Hello, everybody. I'm Roddy Duncan, and welcome to MEAC College Football Saturday. I've been waiting for this game. North Carolina A&T, 5-2, taking on game. Bethune Cookman. Patel Troutman, a quarterback who can do it all. To tell you more about the game and to help me out about it, it's my man, Mark Gray. You're talking about you've been looking for this game. You've been looking to get fed because I saw you before the game. Anyway, you're absolutely right, Ronnie. This is a tremendous football game. You know, normally you schedule teams that you can walk over for homecoming. This is a put-up or shut-up game for North Carolina A&T. Bethune Cookman comes in feeling like they got disrespected a couple of years ago. And, of course, a and comes in off of a disappointing performance last week. As you said, brother, it's on. Forget about the wishbone. They call it the Wyatt bone. And if they can, they will break your back with that bone. They start off with Patel Troutman, but then there's number three, Mr. Jay Rogers, Jay Vaughn Rogers, a young man who has definitely scored five touchdowns this season, ran for over 500 yards, and is simply outstanding. Well, when you're the second leading rusher in the conference, they'll call you what you want him to call you. I tell you, <laughs> this kid can do it all. He's a powerful runner between the tackles. He has the speed to get to the outside, and he can certainly take it to the house averaging almost seven yards a carry. And when you're playing in the Wyatt Bone offense, which is a variation of a veer and a wishbone type of set, you need a back like Rogers, who's kind of like the, shall we say, Mike Rogier, so to speak, of the MEAC. There's one young man who can take care of business in the MEAC. He's number 22 for North Carolina A&T, Maurice Hicks. What a delight to watch him against FAMU. Man, he broke off some you-know-what. <laughs> a little something-something proper-like, right? You got it in <laughs> Tallahassee. I'm, I'm telling you, he broke tackles, he was in the secondary, and he made things happen. Florida A&M tried to come up, put eight, nine guys in the box. Once he broke containment, he was just able to put, take it to the house. Rushing for over 230 yards in that particular game. He comes into this contest having rushed for 100 yards in the last three contests. This kid can simply do it all. And it's, you, you look at the A&T stats, and you notice that their offensive efficiency has improved as he started getting more touches of the football this season. When you look at the top offensive stats in the MEAC, there's one young man whose name comes to mind. He's number nine. I'm talking about Patel Troutman. When you see a quarterback who can do the things he does, you might say, could he be playing on Sundays in the sometime future? You just never know. Well, I don't know if he's going to play Sundays at the quarterback position, but he's going to play Sunday somewhere. You talk about a slash type of guy. He'll beat you with the air, as he does right there, connecting with Antonio Stanley. This is where he's most dangerous. Getting to the outside with the option and then turning it upfield. This kid has world-class speed. He's like a legitimate 4-3 running back playing the quarterback position. He can simply do it all, and you talk about the most explosive offensive player in the conference. It may be Patel Troutman. One of the hardest workers in the conference is Jason Battle, quarterback for North Carolina A&T. He may not have the impressive stats, but somehow number 14 finds a way to get the job done. Well, in the A&T scheme of things, the quarterback is not supposed to win the game. He's just not supposed to lose it. And Jason Battle is the quintessential field general for the A&T offense. Smooth, calm, cool customer, but he's got to do a lot better now in terms of his ratio interception to touchdown passes. I tell you, we got all the makings for a Donnybrook, brother, and uh, wipe that stuff off your tight. Hey, let's take a look at those U.S. Airways comparisons. And when you talk about these quarterbacks, they are flying high. And, of course, they take U.S. Airways because, you know what? They know how to make it into the end zone. It's going to be one heck of a game. Are you ready for it, partner? I'm ready for it. Are you ready party. to get it, on? get it on? Let's get busy. We've got homecoming at Aggie Stadium coming up at you on MEAC College Football.
Talking about Coach Billy Hayes getting ready for homecoming once again as the Aggies of North Carolina A&T get ready to take on Bethune-Cookman. What a game is going to be. Great weather conditions. And there he is. There's a new sheriff in town. His name is Alvin Wyatt. And currently it is 78 degrees and sunny and the wind is light. You know what? We've got a man on the sideline who's talked with both coaches. That's Sam Smith. Sam, what's going on on the sidelines? Well, guys, Alvin White, the Bethune-Cookman head coach, is ready to go, and so is his team. I spoke with him just moments ago. He says he knows the doubters are doubting his team because they haven't played a quality schedule up to this point. He says that will all change if they beat A&T this afternoon, and he is looking forward to a strong outing from his team. Back up to you guys. All right, there's Alvin Wyatt, and thanks a lot, Sam. Yes, you see he's got the star. He's got the sheriff. <laughs> he's ready to load up and put him down, Mark Gray. The sheriff is definitely coming in town with uh, a chip on his shoulder. If you read some of the press clippings coming out of the local newspapers in the Daytona Beach area, this game is kind of personal. And you look back a couple of seasons, uh, you know, Coach Wyatt feels that Bill Hayes ran it up on him. He gets a chance. He'll try to do it today. Daniel Solares is going to be kicking it off. The man set to return. One of the most exciting players in MEAC college football history. I speak of Antonio Stanley. They call him Mr. Excitement, averaging 24.1 yards per kickoff return. Tell me, this young man and can't break it off special. One of the best in the nation at the 1AA level. Stanley's going to take that about three yards deep, but it's a touchback, and we'll take it at the 20-yard line. Now it's time to take a look at our United States Postal Service starting lineups for the offense for, of course, that great Wildcat. And look at that. Napoleon Joseph, when you talk about going off the right guard, he's a special one, and so is Sadu. You're absolutely right. Uh, Sarduy is the man. And Jay Rogers, we talked about him earlier. He will be the key to the wide bone offense, moving the chains all afternoon. And obviously the quarterback is that Patel Troutman. This young man is special. He's got Eric Lash, a young man who has 4-3 speed in the 40-yard line. Number 19, he's the wideout. Look at the numbers there, and they are impressive. Only six interceptions, seven touchdowns. He can pass it. Look out for the wide bone. It can break your back. The give to Jay Rogers. No, it isn't for Tell Troutman. Brought down by B.J. Little. And that's going to be something that we can look forward to. Now taking a look at the USPS starting defensive lineup. And Leonard Relaford, number 92. What a huge guy. His daddy played here. And now he's playing at North Carolina a and Well, look at the other part of that defense. Sammy Rogers, he's so huge. B.J. Little, Ray Massey, and Mr. McLean. Bryce takes you down. All also, when you look at the secondary of the North Carolina A&T, you see Mr. Booker Washington. He brings it right to you. That will be second down for the Wildcats of the film Cookman. There he is, Coach Billy Hayes, getting them ready. It's the Wyatt Bone offense. It's the option. It's special. Tell Trotman back to pass, but this time he takes it up. He fumbled, and it is recovered by the Aggies. Well, just like that, we saw a couple of weeks ago when a t was down in Florida, they were able to take advantage by, with that relentless defensive pressure, making something happen. And this time, Troutman just coughs it up. Looked like he had a lane to break it off. See, he's got a good lane to throw in. He looks like he's about ready to scamper out of trouble. Loses his feet just a little bit, but absolutely just put the ball on the turf. And boy, what a bad start for Bethune Cookman on the road in Greensboro. Ray Massey with the recovery, number 55. That ball booted out of there and you know this is a huge test for the Wildcats but you talked about the Aggies and that defense they call it blue death and mark it is something huge but this puts the burden of uh, proof on the second rated defense in the conference that being Bethune Cookman Ronnie ball on the 30 yard line it's a first down Jason Battle is your quarterback first and 10 the pitch out the gift to Ramondo North on the end of the round North turning the corner the 30 the 25 knocked out somewhere around the 23 yard line you would not have a problem at all with Ramondo North playing Keyshawn Johnson now let's take a look at the United States Postal Service offensive lineup for North Carolina A&T Curl Burley you see him there that young man can definitely play I love the right guards on both teams looking at the other part of that offense number one you just so I'm Jimmy the ball. North, and you know Adrian Parks is no joke. He can definitely take it to the water. Chris Caldwell is a wide receiver I like, and Marcus Bryson, number 88. And there, of course, is your quarterback, Jason Battle. 
Yes, folks, it continues to be one of those games that you will love to see. Ball on the 24-yard line to give to Maurice Hicks. He's busting through. Maurice Hicks down at around the 16-yard line. a and loves to go straight up the gut. They like to let the big nasties up front open holes, and that time it looks like they were picking up where they left off a couple of weeks ago. That's another first down for the North Carolina a and and that young man right there, if he can stop making mistakes, it will be special. The United States Postal Service defensive lineup for Bethune-Cookman, Damian Cook, what a special player, and look at that Anthony Hubba. Big Bubba has seven sacks on the season. Tell me he's not ready, and that's a young man no one has talked about, Racine Matthews who has seven interceptions and once again hits but the ball was fumbled and it looks like it's going to be recovered by Bethune Cookman let's see what the officials rule looks like the Aggies are giving it right back the major rugby scrum is going on down there it goes back to Bethune Cookman you make a mistake and I will make one too and you know what hot potato who leads the MEAC in turnover margin plus eight it's the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. Alvin Wyatt and Billy Hayes are two coaches that go at it. Look at these two fans here. Take well, a look at the replay, Mark. Let's take a look at the shot right up the middle. He had the hole, he blasted through that A gap, and then he gets stripped. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like Mathis might have gotten his hand in there to rip that ball loose, and it was recovered by Bethune Cookman. So Troutman makes a bit of a mistake, and the defense bails him out. Josh Oglesby, the inside linebacker, with the recovery on that instance and Ronnie this dangerous offense I think the offensive advantage clearly goes to the balance of Bethune Cookman this afternoon remember we're talking about two teams that are battling it out for the MEAC championship two teams that right now there are four teams with an eye on the prize and that's the MEAC championship as well as the division one double way playoff spot this game is one that people say you can't hype it up too much come on when you put over 30,000 people here at Aggie Stadium six players on the line of scrimmage it makes all the difference in the world. That was Sam Jones, who happens to be the man who is the referee, head referee, for today's game. Well, Bethune-Cookman, of the many great things that they do, are not the most disciplined team. They're the most penalized team in the MEAC, averaging about 10 penalties per contest. And in a game like this, we'll definitely have to keep a note on how many penalties they have on this afternoon. Well, you know, they're talking about backing that thing up, and right now, it's backed up to the two-yard line. Jay Rogers, what a very special player. Look at the numbers on him. 85 carries, 175 yards. He is averaging nearly seven yards per carry. And he is the guy that is going to be the one person that a and has the key on, aside from Troutman, because primarily this team wants to keep the ball on the ground and slug you. Coach Bill Hayes talked about that yesterday. He said they're the type of team, you hit them in the mouth, they're going to hit you back. Ball's on the one-yard line. It will be a first and 14. There's a timeout of action. Oh, well, it's homecoming. It takes everybody a little bit of time to get the cobwebs out, Ronnie. Get the sleep out of your eyes. Let's take a look at these great standings and why this game is so important. You see Bethune Cookman 4-0 in the conference, 7-0 overall. But this, Mark, let's face it, is their best test. And next weekend, they take on Hampton University, a game that we'll be doing right here on me at College Football Saturday. So once again, we got the comedy of errors going on. Run the 25 second clock. Wow, I guess uh, referee Sam Jones getting in the grip of the play clock, clock operator. Referee Sam Jones got his television time and was very <laughs> demanding about it as well. Once again, we've got a first down situation. Ball is on the one yard line. And it's huge. And that time, did you see the defense? Once again, Sammy Rogers, number 41, saying, I will get on your back and you can't take me for a ride. Well, this is a game as it plays out, Ronnie. We'll start looking at it a lot more like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood on either side of the ball. When Jay Rogers gets it, believe you me, Sammy Rogers will have the radar lock on him all afternoon. And that time, Rogers, man, I got to tell you something, man. I love the way this kid plays. He plays in that A&T formation, what they call a whip linebacker. So what that is is a hybrid version of a safety and a linebacker. That blue depth defense is pretty huge. And Mark, talk about the numbers we're seeing on the screen just an impressive defensive performance all season long and it's been consistent as we see right there once again Ray Massey 
all over it with number 55 getting it done. I'm telling you, the Blue Death defense scares you sometimes because they are so intimidating. Look at them, Mark. This is Massey playing off a block, filling that hole, and there is absolutely no surge at the point of attack. So as we've seen early on, at least in the early stages of this contest, up front against North Carolina A&T is almost immovable. And there's the Sheriff looking to try to move some fun. Folks, you got to go out there and move some. Shake it fast and watch yourself. <laughs> 11.30 left to go in the first quarter of this game. And there's battling Bill Hayes, a man who is so intense, he could go out there and play today. There's a man whose expression doesn't change at this, during the season at all. Dropping with the pass, but it's incomplete. And once again, the Blue Death defense was all over him. Did you say Ray Massey? Did you say number 55? Was he there in Mr. Troutman's face? Well, it's setting up to be a defensive struggle. And, and the defense is here, at least early on, are well ahead of the game right now. A&T's defense bails their offense now out, and now Caldwell will have an opportunity to give A&T great field position. Caldwell is going to be trying to spot this one somewhere inside the 40-yard line. I would say at around about the 38. And you talk about a young man who is something special. All right, doing the punting duties, Zach Adrian. Chris Caldwell. At the 20, Caldwell turn it up. See you later, Chris Caldwell with the return for the touchdown. Boy, did you see that block? Somebody got their clock cleaned, and that's brought him around the corner for the touchdown. A 38-yard punt, and the return was something special because Chris Caldwell let off something special. Watch him come around to the corner, and that block on number look, 34 just cleaned the clock of someone, and that just opened it up for Caldwell. The young man who normally is in the backfield. Was that, was no, that? that was Curtis Deloitte, buddy. Unbelievable, boy. Curtis coming through large and big time. <laughs> Going for the point after, Darren Dawkins, number 80. And we've got some of that funny stuff coming on the field. I'm talking about penalty play. <laughs> boy, that was an impressive block, man, to consider he was able to square, get that block between the shoulders and not be charged with a clip. Chris Godwell is something very special, number four. Point snap, ball star, movement on the offensive line. Five yard penalty, still a try. In a game like this, you wonder how the team equipment will respond. And let's face it, they backed themselves up into a position that was going to hurt them regardless. Mm -hmm. And Bill Hayes was going to walk away from this possession with no more, no less, that is, than three points. One thing about it, Bethune has the type of offense and the balance in their attack to get right back in. Kick is up. Kick is up, and the kick is good. It is 7-0. The Aggies are making their fans happy on homecoming 2000. It's me at College Football 2000. Look at Caldwell with the MEA. See you later. Everybody, and yes, the band is getting pumped up, and why not? It's homecoming for the Aggies, and they have a 7-0 lead on Bethune-Cookman. Undefeated in the MEAC in first place, 7-0. But will it stay that way as the Aggies let one get away last week, 17-16, in the nation's capital at Howard University? And you know they fat, fight mad right now. Well, I tell you what, if Bethune-Cookman wants to get back into this contest, it's going to stop up, start up front. I mean, the Wildcats have got to do a better job. Patel Troutman is having absolutely no time to pass, and guys like Antonio Stanley, we've got to hope to give his team better field position. He's one of the most exciting players there. Antonio Stanley down to that one at the one. Stanley's still on his feet, and he got tripped up. And if he hadn't marked, there's a possible possibility he would have taken it in. Well, let's take a look at the National Car Rental scoring drive here, and it was an explosive way the North Carolina a t Aggies got on the scoreboard. This is Chris Caldwell. He got a great block, sprung down the near sideline, and took it to the house. And that's right, young fellow, that's your National Car Rental scoring drive. All right, that was a 27-yard return by Antonio Stanley. He is also into the offense, one of the wide receivers, and, of course, the sheriff's upset, but who cares right now because he's got to see his team get on the scoreboard. Eric Lash, the other wide receiver, out on the wide side, the wide bone. 
Give to Jay Rogers, but he's worked down in a hurry, of course, on that side and trying to make the tackle. A whole bunch of those Aggies getting the job done. And leading the charge that time, it was B.J. Little, who has been a beast for the last three or four weeks. I mean, you look at the top of the tackling statistics in the, in the MEAC for the last month or so, and B.J. Little has been no worse than third on any given week. Just having an outstanding season is the senior for the Aggies. All right, second down, 11 yards to go. A lost on that play. Ball on the 24-yard line. North Carolina A&T taking on Not the Wildcats. The when the opposing team breaks the huddle, we are asking the fans not to play when the opposing team breaks the huddle. You know, the Redskins had this problem in... What is that, FedEx Field now? A couple of weeks in a row, and it cost them like $20,000. So you can't be giving your home team an advantage by playing when the offense has the ball of the opposition. You know, this is a beautiful sight to see. Historically, black colleges filling it out for homecoming. Of course, they do it so well down here in Aggie country in Greensboro. Second down, 11 yards to go. Troutman back to pass. Troutman lets it go. He goes to Eric Lash in and out of his hands. Eric should have held on to that one. But, of course, Sammy Rogers is there. And can you hear the footsteps? Yeah, I think he did hear the footsteps that time. 41 had a beat on him in coverage, but you're right. Troutman gets around the corner and delivers a strike off the roll, and Lash has to make that play. So, early on, Bill Hayes' team, certainly from a defensive standpoint, is well ahead of the curve. And offensively, Bethune-Cookman is just a little out of sync. No rhyme, no reason to their offense here in the first five minutes of this one. It's a long third down, third and 11, ball on the 24-yard line. The third down conversions not looking all that great. Calvin back to pass. This time he finds Antonio Stanley, and again, the ball in and out of the hands of the receiver. Hey, Antonio, if you missed the excitement, you got to hold on to that one like it's fresh. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, if you missed the excitement, you can, you can only excite the masses when you catch the football. So the bottom line is two opportunities for Bethune-Cookman to make something happen with the passing plays, and they go awry. So now it's on the defense once again to try to make something happen. Boy, the receivers are let down Patel Troutman on that drive. That's something you hate to see done. Zach Adrian is your punter. Man, he put that one up. And it goes out of bounds. And Alvin Wyatt is so confused right now. It looks like he's a little exercise. A little bit of confusion is going on over there. Let's take a look at the Sheridan Poll of the historically black colleges and universities across the country. And as you see, Bethune-Cookman comes in here number one. If the season ended today and Bethune-Cookman was ahead, they would run away with the National Black Championship. But the reigning National Black Champions are number six, North Carolina A&T, winning it all last year. And Coach Billy Hayes picking up every virtual coaching honor of the year. Florida A&M and Hampton, four and five teams in that poll meeting today on homecoming in Tallahassee. Give to Maurice Hicks. Maurice Hicks finds an opening, and Hicks takes it eight yards, and he's only two yards shy of a first down. Why is this young man so special? And right now, he has over 600 yards for the season. Number 22, Maurice Hicks of the Aggies. You know, want to know why he's special? Well, just give props to the guys in front of him. Dwayne Hammett, Chris Kenlock, Victor Marte, Carol Burley, and Quazine Mitchell. Look, it's a flood to the far side. He's going to get that lane and just explode. Break a tackle there, break two more there, and just keep on moving. you got to love Hicks because the first tackler never seems to be able to bring him down. you got to like the attitude of the Aggies. When they put you down, they try to bury you. It's a second down, second and two. Ball on the 37-yard line. Battle back to pass. Battle looking. And he was looking for Caldwell, and he couldn't find him because you have some defense out there for the Wildcats of the Duke. Anthony Hubbard, the junior red shirt, who's got 45 tackles on the season, but 10 of them for loss, was back there in pass coverage to disrupt that play. And that has uh, brought a look of perplexity, shall we say, to Coach Bill Hayes. All right, it's third down. Now, a lot of people in, in, in Aggieland want North Carolina to throw, foot, throw the football a lot more. This is a third and short situation. They've been so effective running the football, which means they're set up to go long. Mondo North and Helton, and they were going for the short yardage, but this time Hicks wasn't able to pick it up. That'll put them in a punting situation for North Carolina A&T. 
And that's why a and will have to give up the ball. So a strange play call on third and two when you know you've got the second rated defense in the league, especially against the run, stacking up nine against you. And that was, that was one of those situations that hurt a and last week at Howard, trying to run into the teeth of an eight, nine man front that was virtually immovable. Set back there to receive for the Wildcats. Uh, Seen Mathis. This young man is something special. 14.1 yards on each return. Wow. Wow. Almost landed on the one yard line. And I'm almost sure if he had turned back, he would have said to himself, please, don't let you down this one at the one. Boy, that is just a tremendous job by Quentin Lewis, a defensive lineman who is 6'2", 260 pounds, getting down there to almost down that ball. Got some laundry on the field right now. The officials talking it over. Sam Jones is your lead official today. What a beautiful day for college football and for homecoming here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Illegal motion on the outside. Kills and refuse. First down going this way. All right, we'll take a break in the action. It's North Carolina a and 7, but Thune Cook with nothing. We'll come back with much more of me at College Football Saturday. Greensboro, North Carolina, 8, 18 left to go in the first quarter. It was a 38-yard return on a punt. Chris Caldwell for a touchdown as the Aggies of North Carolina a and have the lead right now over Thune Cookman, who came into this game undefeated 7-0. And right now, they are searching for some identity on offense. And they've been able to shut down that young man, Patel Troutman. I'm talking about the blue depth defense of the Aggies. Well, his receivers have done a lot to uh, shut him down this afternoon to this point as well, Ronnie. We've got jumping off sides, North Carolina a and That you can't afford to do. And the guilty party on that was Virgil Neal, number 56. Virgil Neal is a true freshman destined for stardom in this league. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Once again, that's the man in charge with the white hat. He's out here, referee Sam Jones. 35 wildcat. on the 25 now first down five yards to go Troutman with the pitch out and there that time you saw the effectiveness of what can happen when you speak of Bethune Cookman and that was Todd Parrish with the run you know something watch the fake here see great read by Troutman but the dive just kind of sucked everybody in looking for Rogers they fake the dive the dive they look at Alvin White cracking the smile as of yet. No reason to smile. That's just the first break of daylight. Alvin wants to see him in the end zone. He wants to see him in the end zone like maybe a 73 points. Like that one time he didn't want to shake the hand of Bill Hayes because he felt like Hayes was running up the score. Once again, that riot ball offense continues to break down that defense. Carolina A&T on the run that time. Jason McCoy, number 25. Boy, McCoy showing blazing speed when he got to the outside and some power as well. So instead of going right into the teeth and the strength of the Aggie defense right now, Troutman and Coach Wyatt have decided they're better off trying to attack the outside. What is the key to the Wyatt Bone for those who may not be as football intelligent as Mark Gray? And how does someone watching at home follow what's happening, Mark? You basically have to follow number nine. <laughs> Wherever number nine is chances are you've got the football the burden of making a quick read is on him he's like a magician out there and I speak up to tell Troutman that time just a straight dive see that's the kind of thing that'll hold the linebacker that's the kind of play Ronnie where it may not look like it gains any yards in the stat but it sets you up for something else in the next couple of plays or so be I'll be very shocked if they come back and go up the middle twice Sam Smith on the sideline, Sam. Thanks, guys. Hey, the coaches over at the Wildcat sideline are telling their players not to panic. They don't think the AT offense can drive down the field against the Bethune defense. Meanwhile, now that you see that Bethune's offense has better field position, they've got more flexibility with that wide phone offense, and you can see them 
attack the edges a little bit better. They had to be conservative when they were down, trapped in their own end zone. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Sam. You know, Sam makes a very important point. There's a timeout in the action right now. Bethune-Cookman has called it. And let's face it, you're talking about two very stingy defenses in the MEAC. We'll come back and pick up that point. It's MEAC College Football Saturday. You see the Aggies. You see Bill Hayes. He's leading 7-0. Saturday, the one thing about historically black colleges in the MEAC, some of the best bands in the country. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a listen to both bands from Bethune-Cookman as well as the host, North Carolina A&T. Can you get your groove thing going? It's the Wildcats. <laughs> Stick around for our NUE halftime show, the Greyhound Band Show, the NUE Band Show, as well as highlights. It's all coming your way, and Coach Bill Hayes could put a smile on his face, but he knows it's early in the contest. 7-0, the Aggies lead, and that man looks so stoic. He is sitting there with nothing but concentration on his face. It's the Wyatt Bone offense. It's Patel Troutman, Bethune Cookman, and jumping off sides, North Carolina A&T. The guilty party that time was Robert Williams. That's that hard snap count. That's a guy trying to beat the snap count, and Troutman is just showing field generalship right there. Offside now. on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That'll take the ball to the 48-yard line. And that'll be a great situation for Bethune-Cookman. BCC wasting no time moving downfield at the expense of the Aggies. I remember four years ago when Troutman came in the lead, he was just demolishing people on sheer talent. He's got guile and savvy all of a sudden, and the Aggies are killing themselves right now with penalties. It's first and five. Troutman still with the ball, with the read, but this time he is brought down. And can you say B.J. Little with a little big play? B.J. <laughs> BJ Little. Maybe B.J. is kind of synonymous with big play. Certainly that's the case here in Greensboro. This is a good read and a savvy play by Troutman. You want to know why? Because the defense strings it out, and that was Little who strung it out. He could have made that pitch, but it would have been a dangerous pitch. So it looks like a play that goes for naught, but it was a savvy play by the senior quarterback. Doesn't make anything, but he certainly doesn't, certainly doesn't lose that much. A second down, placing the ball on the 47-yard line, seven yards to go. That's our situation. Troutman with the ball. Troutman thinking of the pitch. Troutman kicks a first down for BCC. That's the savvy I'm talking about. You talk to, you know, he had an opportunity to make a pitch maybe twice and just decided, you know something, I better keep it myself. See, fake the dive, and he'll get down here, and Ante does a good job in containment stringing it. He fakes, he looks, he, well, I'm going to keep it to myself, and I'm going to carry it on down and pick up the first down. That's that's a heads-up job of quarterbacking by the senior who stayed at home to play his college football. You know, I talked to him before the game. Man, he said, you know, I didn't recognize you. I started to say, tell what? I only lost about 13 pounds, not 23. <laughs> it's okay. Last time I saw him, he put together a heck of a show against Morgan State University right there. Sea Breeze, Florida. That's where he's from. Tell Troutman still with the ball. The pitch. I tell you what, that Wyatt Bone offense is very special. Terran Porter taking it for some positive yards. And it is so difficult to defense because you've got the prototype quarterback for it who, like Troutman, is almost like an MEAC version of uh, Turner Gill. That's what I was alluding to, how you have to be disciplined within your lanes and what I wanted you to explain to our viewers in reference to defending the Wyatt Bone. You know, basically what happens is it's all about containment. You have to be disciplined if you're a linebacker and stay at home, know your assignment, and you cannot freelance. And with a guy like Troutman, I guess if I were on the sideline accidentally, I might think about a spy, one guy who's dedicated to follow number nine around all afternoon. Hey, I call him Houdini, man. He's a special player to tell Troutman. Troutman still with the ball. The pass going to Antonio Stanley. And it is picked up. It's picked up by the Aggies. Oh, no. Seems like every time we see Mr. Blakeney, he picks off a pass. And he, he had a big pick against Florida AM and he comes through with a huge one. Now, as we talk about the savvy and the decision-making process of Patel Troutman, that was a bad decision right there. He threw into double coverage, and there was pressure on him, so he didn't get a whole lot on it. And the sheriff is seething right now. See, watch right here, Ronnie. All right, he gets down to the line. There's nobody there, so he's just going to force it downfield. He could turn it up, and this is in the double coverage and a bad pass, and that was almost a gift interception off the tip drill by Blakeney. Ahmad 
Blakeney. Number two is two going up against two. Going up against Antonio Stanley. The one deficiency you have with Stanley is his size. He's only 5'8". Going up against a guy, Blakeney, who's 5'11", and you know who's going to win that battle on a jump ball. Well, in the first 10 minutes or so of this game, we've already had three turnovers, two by Bethune Cookman. And, and interesting to note that the senior, the calming influence, the field general of the offense, is responsible for both of these interceptions early on. First down ball on the seven yard line. Maurice Hicks turning the corner, keeping his feet busy. Maurice Hicks was able to gain three yards of the play. The difference in this game, as we've seen early on, is that Bethune Cookman get, is getting penetration from their upfront guys, and their linebackers are doing a great job right now of finishing the tackle. Because Hicks is such a hard runner. He'll break, break one tackle there, but see, they're smart. Unlike Florida A&M, who was tackling them high, they're going for the legs, and that's what you have to do to stop Maurice Hicks. All right, you can place the ball on the 13-yard line. Second down, four yards to go. Second and four. Hicks again, this time, busting up the middle. Hicks across the 40, he's brought down. Maurice Hicks once again, breaking off a little something special. Tell me he ain't a bad man. And talk about that hole being opened up by the offensive line of North Carolina A&T. Mark the, Gray, it's something to watch. Watch this block. That center, Victor Marte, playing in his final homecoming, just blast. His, the person he was blocking three yards back, that was the hole that opened up for Hicks to hit it. And he just took it damn near out to, uh, oh, the 40-yard line. If Mathis hadn't stopped him, who knows? He could have been in the end zone. Maurice Hicks, very special. Ball at the 41. to give to Hicks one more time. Hicks turning, but this time he's brought down by the defense of the Wildcats. Yeah, but I tell you something. If A&T wants to go up and just turn it into a blood bloodbath, just between the A and the B gaps, once again, they're doing a phenomenal job. Marte and I believe Burley are just controlling the line of scrimmage right now. You know, when you talk about destiny for Mr. Hicks, this is his quote. Look at him. I came in last year's homecoming. He sat in the upper row of the Aggie Stadium. When I realized I'm supposed to be playing at this level, this young man is so confident about what he can do at all times. That was in the news and record. And that was, of course, this week, 10-28. He's letting everyone know he's hit it for destiny, and destiny could be a MEAC championship, something they want to hold. Remember, it's their MEAC championship. They are the defending champions. They are the national black champions of 1999, and they will give up nothing easily. A win over Bethune Cookman today would speak volumes. Let's face it, Mark. 7-0, Bethune comes in here, chest out, sticking it out, saying we're bad, we're bold, we're coming in here, we're going to steal your soul. But the Aggies are saying, not in our house. Well, I tell you something, Quentin Lewis wasn't having at that time in the center of that Bethune Cookman defensive front playing off his block sealing that hole and stopping Hicks third down seven yards to go ball on the 43 yard line battle battle being flushed out of the pocket battle being taken down battle was battling for his life and that time man he was mugged boy he's lucky he didn't separate a shoulder or something that time because he got drilled and right into the turf on his shoulder and this is the leading sack attack in the MEAC now with 36 and a half after that one and Bethune Cookman is proving already that their front seven will get after the quarterback all day. Steve Baggs number 52 on the sack that's his eighth sack of the season he leads the Wildcats and sacks what a young man who is something special a true freshman getting it done that was last of course bringing it down and it was a very short return if any and we've got some exciting football We've got more than two minutes. Two minutes and one second left just before the second quarter. Taking a look at some other games. Well, you know what? They're playing one at Howard University. They got over 70,000 people. Only 13,000 come and watch the game there. Delaware State, South Carolina State, <laughs> FAMU, and Hampton University. And Morgan State is taking on Western Illinois. That's our target games of the day. And the MEAC will continue to update throughout the day with our target scoreboard. The homecoming is definitely the order of the day in the MEAC. It's homecoming in Tallahassee and homecoming in D.C. as well as here in Greensboro. 45-yard punt that time. 
Josh Robin with the read. He was trying to give it off, but that time he wasn't going anywhere. And anywhere he wasn't going fast because North Carolina A&T was right there. Troy, time. Look at that crowd. Isn't it huge? Isn't it beautiful? This is a great thing to see. Historically black university showing off his true colors. Homecoming, reunion type setting. Get an opportunity to rekindle those old relationships. Your friends near and dear, and you get a chance to say, we went to school together. Now, I'm so proud of everything you're doing there now. Are certain That's keys. what I love about the black university universities and historically black colleges because when you have a homecoming man it is the best time around and look at this over 30,000 people at Aggie Stadium Alvin that time finally giving it off for too much of that defense for the Aggies sitting right there and it was off to Wilson a dis disciplined job of linebacking by the entire crew that time keeping their assignments and keeping Troutman contained and when you do that that's a recipe for what we just saw Jason, nothing Jason McCoy was the man with the ball you saw him there number 25 that'll be third and seven he was able to pick up three yards on the play if that Patel looking like he's back to pass, trying to go up the middle. And see, that's why he's special. Patel Troutman, you see him crossing the 50-yard line. He's into Aggie territory. Patel Troutman brings the ball to the 47. It's discipline that time, and Patel Troutman takes advantage of the discipline in the A&T defensive unit. Look, the linebackers have it in containment. They look and expecting him to go outside, look on the option. But no, he turns it upfield, gets into the secondary, and this is where he's dangerous. Look at that move right there. And then he has a third jet where he can just scoot to the outside and outrun everybody that's linebackers and secondary. That's why Patel Troutman, as you said, Ronnie, is a special player for my money, the best all-around offensive weapon in the conference this year. A 27-yard gain for Patel Troutman on that one. First and 10 from the 47-yard line for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Troutman gives it off, and once again, the Wyatt Bone, as I stated before, can break your back, and they are all that. That was Taji Parrish on the run, another first down for BCC. Well, Parrish takes advantage of the fact that the a and middle of their defensive unit has to respect Jay Rogers going through the middle. Everybody bought the first fake into Rogers, and that just left no containment to the outside, and he's able to pick up another first down. So suddenly, you can start hearing that Wildcat off offense getting cranked up you know they sputtered a little bit early on had a couple of turnovers now they are beginning to click first and 10 from the 35 yard line bcc the wildcats on the move tell Charlie still with the ball you see it moving there across the 30 the 30, 25 what a player and you know people we talk about patel Trotman as a quarterback and he took a shot he's a little slow getting up that time he knows that he's going to take punishment running the wild bone offense but a young man who continues to impress you they are so huge this year and i speak of that offensive line they are mobile agile and hostile and i'm talking about bcc because you know what you have to be that kind of offensive line because of so much movement going on well let's take a look and see if we can find out what exactly happened sammy rogers was the contained man and it just looks like he might have banged his shoulder up just a little bit and here comes coach wyatt over there right now and that would be a devastating loss for the wildcats when you talk about you know, being the key to an offense, Troutman comes in this game number two in total offense, averaging almost 95 yards per game rushing, and he's set, uh, leading the team in rushing with 660 yards, and that has the offensive brain trust uh, concern right now, but hopefully Patel Troutman for Bethune's sake and the sake of us, he'll be uh, around for the balance of this game. Well, he's going back to the sidelines right now with his coach they're going to talk things over of course and how would you like to be the second string quarterback coming into greensboro on homecoming and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter ronnie might give trotman a chance to check back into the contest
We'll see what happens. We'll come right back. 7 0. North Carolina AT holds the lead. You see the crowd. It's homecoming. A lot of AT, Greensboro, and getting it done. As a new quarterback in the game right now, it's Gary Willett. He's going to be backing up Patel Trauma, who was taken out of the game. The reason why, a real big hit. And of course, he has to be taken out for precautionary measures. They don't want the penalty. But you can best believe, <laughs> unless it's something dramatically wrong. Well, we'll see Troutman again. Like the next play. He really hit, hate to see that uh, Bethune-Cookman's offense take a hit like that. They seem to be in some kind of rhythm. They've finally gotten into some kind of sync, and all of a sudden they lose their trigger man. All right, first down, ball on the 23. Bethune-Cookman threatening to score on the Aggies of North Carolina a &T. We're in the second quarter of action. There's the sheriff with the big star on his chest. Talking Alvin White, Ronnie Duncan, Mark Gray, and Sam Smith on the sideline. Jay Rogers with the take. Jay Rogers takes it up. He's at the 16-yard line. You know, Alvin White loves to tell Chapman. He knew this kid from the day he was born. Went to school with his parents. Listen to Alvin White on the field. We'll add a, a little bit of incentive, but um, we feel that uh, we need to get the job done this year. Um, would be without our, our quarterback, Patel Trotman, uh, after this season is over. And if we're going to be able to compete and do anything, we better do it now. So we, we feel that uh, it will get us fired up uh, for, for play. Uh, but our minds are already set to try and do the things we need to do to get to the NCAA playoffs. All right, Coach Alvin Wyatt, and that was Jay Vaughn Rogers, young man who came to the game with 575 yards. Chopping on the sideline, man. You know, Mark, you said it best. It appeared that he really hurt himself with his shoulder, and that one side of his body just doesn't seem to be reacting the way that he wants. And right now, it's going to go to Jay Rogers as the young man that can bring them through. Now let's take a look at our Xerox first quarter stats. Mark Gray, take over the honors. Well, as you can see, Bethune Cookman was able to jumpstart the rushing game. Got absolutely nothing out of the passing game. a and definitely getting the job done on the ground. Jay Rogers still on his feet. Jay Rogers getting pushed forward inside the 10-yard line. Stopped at about the 8-yard line. And despite the fact that Troutman is on the sideline, guess what? Bethune Cookman is still moving the football. And you want to know why? Because they simplified the offense and just letting the big nasties get up front. And they are just out physical in A&T at this point right now. G guys are getting blasted at the point of attack. And that's allowing the guy we talked about at the beginning of the show, Jay Rogers, to do his thing. And he is certainly doing it. Now. It's another first down, first and goal. Jay Rogers with this time. Leonard Relaford said, you're going nowhere in my house. Boy, Relaford is qu cat quick for a guy his size. I mean, he is a dominant defensive player. Sam Smith has more on Patel Troutman in this situation, and it looks like Patel's about to go back in the game. Hey, Sam, what are you going to tell us we can already see? Right now, Patel is returning to the lineup. The preliminary report from the doctors is that it's, it's an AC sprain in his left shoulder. It's just a matter right now of how much pain he can stand. But as you can see, he's returned to the ball game. Back to you guys. All right, Sam Smith. The man on the sidelines working MEAC College football Saturday. And you can tell he's sort of favoring that right now. Patel, and this time, he's favoring it. And guess what? He became a favorite of the Aggies. Getting in there for the tackle, Isaac Jackson. And Inside linebacker, and Patel is hurting. Yeah, he took a shot. Yeah, Coach Wyatt is definitely going to have to uh, go to the training staff and, uh, you know, uh, rethink this position right now. See, watch. Patel is favoring it, and he wasn't, it wasn't a clean snap, and he's not able to pull back quickly enough on that fake pitch. And that's so key, Ronnie. You know, when you you got to be a field general, uh, manipulate the ball effectively, and without that shoulder, Troutman, it could be, he could be shelved today. Willard is back in the game, number 11. Troutman back out. And I think we may have seen the last of Patel today. And as goes Patel, they say as goes the Wildcats. What a catch! He held on to the ball. Can you believe that? What a catch. Holding on to the ball. Eric Lash. I got to see that one again in slow motion. Because in slow motion it hurts. Booker Washington stepped up and clocked Lash. Boy, watch Booker T. Washington. What's the T for? He tees off on Eric Lash. Woo! Wow, man, you talk about Blue Death defense, now I know why. 
They make you feel like you're about to die when they hit you like that. Third and one. Yeah, we might need to make, make some arrangements. Did you bring, bring out the black suit? All right, fourth down, ball on the three-yard line, and they want to get into the end zone. Jay Rogers, Jay Rogers stepping, and it's six on their side for BCC. Jay Rogers with the three-yard touchdown, and that's why that young man has recorded six touchdowns on the season. But Bill Cookman back on the scoreboard, and all of a sudden, all those folks who came up from Daytona Beach, Florida, are happy to see Mr. Rogers go in his own neighborhood. Well, that place set up by the fact that A&T bought everything, all the... Everything was going inside, and a &T was caught inside. The containment kept the defense there, and it's six points for BCC. All right, six on their side. And the point after was good. We're tied all up. Jay Rogers stepping it on in to his neighborhood. It's me at College Football Saturday, tied up at seven. A little known fact that a lot of Aggies are so proud of. They had an Aggie graduate who ran for president. Can you figure out who it is? It's the Reverend Jesse Jackson. That's the right, the founder of Bush, civil rights leader throughout the country and a proud graduate of North Carolina A&T. And there, of course, is the man who wants to be the sheriff of Greensboro for a day, Alvin Wyatt. And he only wants to be the sheriff long enough to walk out of here with a victory for Bethune Cookman. All right, we're about to kick off. And the Aggies are about to receive. Bethune Cookman doing the honors, getting it done. Zach Aiden. Mondo North picks it up at the minus one, but he's not to his can. Talk about big hits. We've got some big ones, Mark, and Patel Troutman got the short end of it because he was the man getting sacked with the attack of Buda. Boy, I tell you, they got after him early on. It started with B.J. Little in the first possession. This is Troutman once again being contained by Little, who seems to be like the, I guess, unnamed spy. That's once again Nasty and Little with some help from Sammy Rogers. And uh, there is Patel Troutman, obviously in a lot of pain right now. And the only person probably in more pain right now is Alvin Wyatt trying to figure out what is he going to do with that offense. They've developed a special relationship over the years. A lot of people may not know the story if they're not from Daytona Beach and don't follow Bethune Cookman, but Alvin Wyatt actually went to school with Patel Troutman's mother and father. Yes, they're starting to wave here. They finally got it right. Well, North Carolina. Oh, man, they get it right here all the time. Look, Give them credit where credit hey, is due. Hey, it just takes some time. During that break, it was, it was that was not a wave we were looking at. I can't at. talk like, about what people can't see at home. I can only show them the What happens when I've you got. throw the, uh, the pebble in the water? That's Doesn't what make we a had difference, Mark. They got the wave going down, and it's a wave with some rhythm. <laughs> tell you what, BCC is showing some defense. Well, I tell you, Warming I, all over the ball. That was, of course, Hicks on the carry, and he went nowhere real fast. Three yards in a cloud of dust is not going to get it against the Bethune-Cookman defense this afternoon. And A&T is going to have to be, do a better job of mixing up their play calls. You're going to have to take advantage of a guy like Romando North. I'm just wondering, how can a guy be averaging 26.8 yards per reception and only have, like, eight receptions for the season? This is the kind of game where a guy like number one wearing goal has to step up and at least get some touches in this game. Third down, four yards to go, ball on the 23-yard line. And it's battle for first down for North Carolina A&T. This one may be coming back, though. We've, we've got a flag thrown in the area that it's normally thrown by and, uh, uh, the referee, and it's holding against the Aggies. So that just mars a tremendous individual effort by Battle, who was stopped, got out of it, and then picked up a first down. Look at this effort. Fake the dive to Hicks. He is stopped. Hubbard had him. Holding. Then he didn't. Then yard penalty. Still third down. So it looks like I think that time the guilty party for AT. It might have been Burley that time, the right guard, who's assessed for the hole. And suddenly you get the feeling that the ebb and flow is uh, uh, momentum is sort of swinging back towards Bethune Cookman right now. I know they're on the road. I know they've got their second string quarterback in there and they've turned the ball over a couple of times. It just seems like the tone of this game is shifting towards the Wildcats all of a sudden. 
There is Helton wide to the right. Romando North wide to the left. Up the middle. It's Hicks. <laughs> man, talk about a man running like he's possessed. That's Mr. Hicks. He's on a mission. You talk about grabbing the momentum and swinging it right back to your side. I tell you, when, when in doubt, the Aggies just go right up the gut. Look at him coming right at you. Good thing the umpire got out of the way. He could have been an Aggie sandwich. <laughs> Eric Lash once again on the tackle. Just all over the place. We've seen Mathis. Correction on the play. On the punt ball. The Aggies of North Carolina A&T set to receive. Back there is Stanley and Lash. Ball spotted at the 29-yard line. We'll come back with much more of the second quarter. It's a tied ball game. And that young man, Mr. Deloitte, wants to do more. 7-all, Bethune-Cookman and a &T. Downtown Greensboro, North Carolina. You need some endurance? They've got plenty of insurance. <laughs> Just for you, Jefferson <laughs> Pilot. <laughs> Remember, remember those? Remember back in the day when they used to have those commercials during the old ACC oh, basketball man. Billy run? Backer, when, when they, Jim don't, Backer. Don't mention it. Yeah, Jim yeah. Backer. Yeah, yeah. great stuff. Right. Remember, head for the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> had the Gordon's of Gloucester fisherman suit on. Made me appreciate a perfect storm that much more. <laughs> Winner is your quarterback for Patel Troutman. He's out of the game. Number 11 just joining us. Troutman's out. What it's in, and this time he ain't no Troutman, and he gets taken down. Yeah, that's the difference between having a senior who is a field general and a sophomore who's thrown in and this being his first full possession. That time, Woolard tried to go to the outside and make something happen, but a t did not bite. And see, the little things that Trotman does that makes him such a great quarterback, the ball fakes, uh, the, the, the way he just handles that offense, the snap count to get people to jump off uh, offsides. These are the little things that the Wildcat offense will mix without Troutman at the helm. All right, second and 11 from the 28-yard line. What it doing what he does best, passing the football. Not enough for a first down. Will they take it to the 34-yard line? But you see, I like that because that's just as effective as any run play that you want. Todd, that you run. Dodge Parrish on the reception. Because see that what that do is that'll soften the, that, that'll soften the linebackers just a little bit. They'll drop a little bit deeper and they'll open up some run lanes to the inside. Short passes are just as effective as good runs. They keep the defense off balance and they will force them to read and react. Third down ball on the 34 yard line. That's the situation. Five yards to go for a first down for BCC. Willard drops back. Willard under trouble. Willard is brought down on the tackle that time for the Aggies of North Carolina a t Robert Williams. And see, that's the difference between a sophomore thinking and trying to make a decision and a senior just doing it. And that time, you know, there was a little hitch in the giddy-up of Willard, basically because he was trying to read. And it took him a half second to react. Couldn't get the pass off. Now Bethune has the punt. Punting for Bethune Cookman will be Danny Mathis, one of the best punters in the MEAC this year. Obviously, Frank Ziegler of South Carolina State, one of the best in the country. Fake punt, and he ain't faking out nobody. Once again, Aggies coming through big time. Dwayne Fisher snipped out the fake. And Coach Wyatt is sniffing out his special teams unit for frankly blowing that play. Wow, tried to take a little bit of advantage, uh, uh, take advantage, I should say, of uh, A&T setting up for the kick return. And this time, Mr. Burke is getting an earful. He tried to get to the outside, but there's not a punter in America that's going to outrun the quickness of the Aggie defense. And, and a golden opportunity for the A&T offense. New, new, new quarterback for A&T, Keith Matkins. First down for the Aggies. And, of course, that was Maurice Hicks. Matkins is of the two-headed monster at quarterback here in Greensboro, the better passer. And there are a lot of people around here that will tell you they would like to see him get more opportunities. That was one of the big debates during all the tailgating going on outside is who should be starting at quarterback. The people who like to run. Uh, the people who like the run-oriented offense. This is Hicks right here. Now watch it. Just taking a, a shot and then bouncing off and exploding into the secondary. 
He is explosive. He is the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and that was against FAMU a few weeks back, and he ran for over 236 yards. But the point I wanted to make about the quarterback situation here, though, Ronnie, is that, you know, there's a lot of people that want to see Bill Hayes open up the offense, and when he does open up the offense, Mackens is the one who is the more polished passer. So you have a significant contingent here who would like to see the air Aggie attack. They're going to measure this one for a first down, and they're going to be inches short of a first down. The Aggies of North Carolina a and I was already given Hicks the first down, but obviously the officials know better, took the measurement, and there he is. A man who uh, right now I don't think you can have a friendly conversation with <laughs> Alvin White. No, I think he's a little steamed right now. You know, Alvin Wyatt has done something that hasn't been done in a long time down at Bethune Cookman, put together three winning seasons. Depending upon the spot, whether or not the surge was enough, it might not be a first down. Definitely opting not to try to cross the defense up with that call. <laughs> Let's just pound it right on into the center of the second rated rush defense. Sam Smith with more on Patel Troutman. Sam? Thanks, guys. Patel Troutman will miss the remainder of the first half with that left shoulder sprain from the ACL. His return to the game is questionable. They're going to take him to the dressing room, see how he responds to treatment at the half, and then make a determination on when or if he will return to the game. Thanks, guys. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Sam Smith, now sideline reporter. Sam does great work here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Got an opportunity to see him on the air last night. That was Dominique Williams, number 20. And he is a, one of the better pass-catching receivers in this conference is Williams. You'll see him a lot in the passing game when they try to swing the ball out into the flats to the receivers. Now, Battle has checked back into the game at the quarterback position. So, I guess we've got the situation substitutions at the uh, quarterback position for a and right now. Sam just corrected himself. It's an AC sprain for Patel Trout. We'll see what happens at halftime as to whether or not after treatment, as Sam alluded to, whether or not Patel will be back in the game. One guy who got backed up. That was Mr. Hicks doing the damage. Boy, did you see him come in. Jimmy Williams for Bethune Cookman. Jimmy Williams, a guy who uh, has six sacks on, on the season, but he does a great job. Apparently, he was ahead of the snap counter either in the A&T huddle when they call that play because he darn near met the running back at the point that he got the ball from the quarterback. One thing I know about Jimmy Williams, he can flat out bring it to you. Number 48. Jimmy Williams, the Duke Cookman. We got a player down on the sideline right now, and I can't make out exactly who it is. And you got to like a guy like Jimmy Williams who gets it right. He spells it with two M's instead of one. Not like the Red Sox manager. I always, you know, you know working in Atlanta, I'm like, Jimmy, where's the other M, man? You're making Anthony Noble is it. on the sideline. Hurt will come back with more. He goes hurt on the play, number 76. He's a senior, 350 pounds, and he's 6'7". And he doesn't appear to be walking like he's walking for joy. We hope that he's able to come back into the game. It could have been a knee injury, and you see him right there. The big fella looked like he was turning awkwardly. Those are the pains and the bruises that you suffer in college football. Boy, I tell you, man, this game is suddenly becoming a war of attrition. And bodies are falling. We, we expected to have a good old-fashioned war, <laughs> and folks are dropping quickly. A physical game this afternoon, but you kind of expected it. Two defensive, physical, run-oriented teams. Yeah, there are going to be some casualties. Third and ten. Big third down for the Aggies of North Carolina a Trying to find a spot, but this time he ain't going nowhere. Rasheed Mathis on the takedown. Coming up from a safety position and making a one-on-one -on -one arm tackle and hauling battle down high. That's just a great play. Defensive back just coming up and run support. Watch this right here. It's an individual play. If the DB, Mathis, does not make this play, it's a first down, if not more. Got a beat on him, goes up high, hauls him down. Great play. Exceptional speed for a young man who leads the nation with nine interception, Racine Mathis. 
Darren Dawkins going for the field goal. The kick is up. And his signal is good. North Carolina A&T, a 31-yard field goal. Dawkins will come back. The Aggies lead it now, 10 to 7. As Patel, he's hurt, but you never know. He's Houdini. He come back in this game. You see the shot there. Me at College Football Saturday. Roddy Duncan, Mark Gray, Sam Smith, bringing you all the action. Here's our National Cardinal scoring drive. Six plays, two minutes, 29 seconds. 34-yard field goal by Darren Dawkins. That's our National Car Rental scoring drive. Remember, green means go with National Car Rental. Call 1-800-CAR-RENT or book online at www.nationalcar.com. That was Solares with the kickoff. And that's Antonio Stanley. Stanley is on the move. He has only one man to beat. Antonio Stanley at the 30. Stanley at the 20. Stanley pushed out of bounds inside the 15. But there's a flag on the play. I'm just anxious to see whether there was a clip if somebody from Bethune Cookman blocked somebody from AT in the back. Because there was a seal and a hole, and Stanley hit it. And at about the 30 yard line, he was gone. Look at this seal. And he just hit the jet and exploded. There was one man to beat, the kicker, Solares, who does a good job of buying time for the rest of the containment to get there, but I think this one is coming back. So a marvelous kickoff return by Antonio Stanley goes for none. It's too bad. They call him Mr. Excitement. Now Alvin Wyatt thought perhaps he was going to get back on the scoreboard Offensive call with Antonio the, Stanley. Doing the return on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty. First down. But again, it just goes back to the fact that Bethune Cookman is the most penalized team in the MEAC, averaging 10 penalties per game, and this one comes up and bites the sheriff once again. See, you talk about Bethune Cookman being the most penalized team. You talk about the attitude, the brashness that they have. Well, Alvin Wyatt played great football while he was at Bethune Cookman. Who do you think he got drafted by? The Raiders. The Oakland Raiders, the most penalized team in the NFL. <laughs> Here we got it again, Antonio Stanley, and uh, you see him there, Alvin Wyatt. Attitude with a star in his chest. You've got to have an edge <laughs> to roll with a star on your chest. You know everybody's out to get you. There's a new sheriff in town. His name is Alvin Wyatt. <laughs> you got to be cool. He'll lock you up. Hey, put me on lockdown, but you know what? Living in the Daytona Beach ain't bad. <laughs> if I got to be on lockdown, I might as well be on lockdown in the beach. <laughs> and another piece of laundry on the turf, which has Coach Wyatt exercised once again. Alvin Wyatt, one of the more colorful characters in the MIAC, and I tell you what, he is a joy really to be around. Sure he, he loves his kids. He's put together so much fire and so much spirit down there in Daytona Beach, Florida. And that's what I like about it, because there is commitment from him. He is a player. Still first down. It's a person who graduated from an institution and really has a feeling and a passion for the program. All right, our game officials led by Sam Jones. You see Willie Little there, Ted White, Michael Pizzi. Then you've got Rusty Acre, Rod Pearson, and Art Williams is your field judge. Me at College Football Saturday. Those are our individuals calling the game today. And a great group of guys. As a matter of fact, we got complimented by one of the officials today, Mark, and I thought it was great. You know, you're the guys who call the game, and they enjoy what we did, so it's nice. Hey, look, by the way, if you want information on the MIAC, you want to know what's really going down, you want to get the full 1-1, there's only one place to get the full 1-1 on the MIAC. That's at MIACsports.com. My man B.J. Evans puts it together, and you know he gives you the updates. B.J. is the man at MIACsports.com. We'll give him his own website. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love my man Sam, uh, Sam Jones, the official today. The Hall of Famer. That was one of the great lines last week, remember? <laughs> See, you shouldn't have done that, because people would be thinking, Sam officiating game. That's Sam Jones with the North Carolina Central. That's Mr. Excitement, number two. <laughs> Look at him, getting yoked and choked. And, and there's a little activity on the side, and you can't do that, Booker Washington. Number three for North Carolina A&T. Antonio Stanley didn't like that too much. Number two for BCC. Well, I tell you something. There was a little bit of... Uh, face masking going on in that particular instance as well. I think it was a tackle up high. Let's take a look. Great shot, guys. Yep. Booker Washington. Well, that was kind of close. I think he got him around high, and it may have looked like he grabbed the face mask. Personal foul. Mm, 15. Face mask on the defense. 
15-yard penalty. First down. Wow, All right, good. Sam Jones putting it down. 15-yard penalty. You know what? If our cameras can get the sight, people enjoy watching the bands. Look at all the people who are in the end zone on the track surface here at North Carolina A&T awaiting the battle of the bands. Hey, don't go away at halftime. We've got plenty of excitement for you. It's going to be great. North Carolina A&T, Bethune-Cookman. We got a first down ball on the 38-yard line. Will it going to pass? And in and out of the hands of Paris. That is at least three drop passes mm -hmm. I've seen that the Wildcats have not been able to hold on to. And this kid, let's face it, he has to find a rhythm. Well, I'm talking Gary Willard. Don't, no, no fault of the quarterback at all. Second string guy comes out on the half roll and delivers a strike right into the hands of Parrish, and he dropped it. We've seen Stanley drop a pass. We've now seen Parrish. You know, they're not doing anything at all to help the quarterbacks of Bethune-Cookman or the receivers right now. Hey, if you like passing yards, <laughs> this ain't like your this game. game. <laughs> 27 yards for BCC, no yards for North Carolina A&T. Second down, ball on the 38, 10 yards to go for a first down. Will it back to pass? Will it under pressure? Sammy Rogers was there, and he had to get rid of that one. He was trying to throw it to the trombone player in the band. I think. <laughs> he was just trying to get rid of it, Ronnie. Boy, this is a great job. It's a great blitz call by a t at the right time. You're going to see Little come. You're going to see Sammy Rogers come. And there was a cast of thousands that were putting pressure on Willard, and he had to throw the ball into the band. You know, homecoming is great. and We've got some great games on me at College Football Saturday. Next week, we get a chance to see these same BCC Wild Cats taking on Hampton University. Boy, it, it, totally different. And it's home their homecoming coming. down there. It's Hampton's homecoming. Third and ten. Big third down situation. Will it back to pass? Will it? Looking for Antonio Stanley, and it's no go. Ball incomplete, thrown out of bounds. And once again, B.J. Little in there pressuring the quarterback, forcing him to release it early and high, which is why that play goes awry. So Woolard showing pocket presence. But, but speaking of homecoming, you know, this is a great day. What was Alvin Wyatt doing? to get himself into a position to play homecoming here and then go to Hampton. Arguably the two most physical teams in the conference back to back. I don't think you can see it on the uniform, but the one thing I love about Alvin Wyatt, he wears on his chest no fear. Not the greatest punt in the world, but it's getting a nice little friendly roll. And it's going to stop at the 25-yard line. Danny Mathis, number 17. Looked like that ball was deflected somewhat. You know, Alvin Wyatt, we've been talking all afternoon about Alvin Wyatt's unique form of dressing. Oh, he, he got it down. He's yeah. in GQ, in his own mind. <laughs> in, indeed. Let's check out what he thinks about what people have to say about how he dresses. Do you still have I... I am really uh, um, doing pay and attention to uh, the way I'm dressed up, up, up and down the sidelines. Of, of course, I, a lot of people can take it for, you know, being cocky. And I am cocky, but I'm confident in uh, getting the job done uh, in anything that, that I do. Uh, uh, I just feel that uh, what I bring to the table uh, to my athlete uh, uh, is a great outlook uh, for them uh, once they are uh, completed their, their eligibility as far as football is concerned and they enter into the uh, next level of life and, and I try and get them prepared for that because uh, you know uh, uh, no one gonna let you come on the job if, if, if you're not well groomed if, if you're not dressed up, up properly so this is one of the things that I try to instill in it. Alvin White rolling with the new flavor of fashion on the coaching sidelines. Well, you got to be a bad man to coach with crocodile boots on the sidelines in Daytona. Now you got to have attitude. <laughs> attitude, a winning attitude, that of Alvin Wyatt. He's perhaps one of the more colorful oh, characters sure in me at college football. And there boots. are the boots. I see, he, he's my all-groove coach right, yet, right there for just having shoes like that on the sideline. Uh, the all-groove team has to have a coach who's bad enough to wear crocodile boots on the sideline. Those gator boots, he's from Florida. All right, it's a minute 52 just before halftime. Situation looks like this. Third down, ball on the 32, three yards ago. And there's a timeout in the action. Aggies have called it. They want to look things over. And I tell you what, folks, it is a game that has been won that has lived up to the hype. 10-7 is our score. 152. You know they had the cross-country championships, MEAC championships today. And, yeah, those young ladies are out there running and getting their thing done and coming through with winners. MEAC 2000 Conference Championship.
Bethune Cookman actually won the cross country championships. And here are the individual winners. Mark Gray, take over the honors. Bethune Cookman finishing first and second on the women's side. Two young ladies breaking the 20 minute mark. And as far as the men are concerned, BCC wins it. And they, so they go gold, silver, gold, bronze. Go on, BCC. A great day. Norfolk State wins the team championship on the men's side. And uh, the women's championship went to Bethune Cookman. So already a banner day for. Uh, Bethune Cookman here in Greensboro. We're able to get those shots today. Once again, the commitment of MyTeam.com, Fawnstone Productions, and the MIAC, making sure we bring you up to date on what's happening, not just football, but what's happening throughout the MIAC college football. Boy, Hicks took two or three shots and kept on going. Boy, <laughs> physical running back. You like guys who just bring it and who see, who see containment and just challenge it. You got to love Maurice Hicks. You got to love Maurice Hicks because he plays with the love of the game. That is so true. Let's take a look at some other games in Howard University. Leading at halftime over Norfolk, and it's the only game in progress right now. That's our target scoreboard. Target, putting you on target, getting you on target with the scores of the MIAC. How many people do you think are in Northwest D.C. for that one right now? You know what? I had a great time last year having an opportunity to do that game. Dominic Williams with the pass. And... It is completed. Wow. You talk about getting into the Keith basket. Mackins, the quarterback. <laughs> you see Dominique coming through the game, and you say to yourself, Williams is going to catch the ball. This time, Dominique shows you he can throw it. Well, folks have been talking about getting Mackins into the lineup and getting him more into the passing game. I didn't think they were talking about him as the primary receiver. This is a great pass, a good catch, but handling a quarterback, trying to play receiver as though a quarterback would. All right, Mackins back in the game at quarterback. You know he can pass the ball. He lets that one go in and out of the hands of Maurice Hicks. Great read, great pass. And Hicks is upset at himself. Oh, you see it. He should be. It's right there on your TV screen. He recognizes not only would he had a first down, but he would have broke off something special. Boy, there is a quick read, and he was open in the flat. And look at this crowd. This, this is a banner day. Shirt sleeve day, Chamber of Commerce, a day to play to. Any, any, any sports cliches that you want to throw out, it's all that today. But when you look at the end zone over here on the track, you've got people standing up right. who want to see the band. Don't forget next week, we've got a game at 3.30 in the afternoon, BCC in Hampton. Delayed handoff. Cornelius Gary. Not only did they sneak the running back in, they snuck that play. It was a quick count, and it was a de delayed handoff by Mackins, and the hole parted like the goal C. Boy, he just blasted into the secondary, and now inside a minute to go, the Aggies have to burn a timeout. 48 seconds to go before halftime. Aggies lead it 10 to 7. Me at College Football Saturday. It's been fun. It's been exciting. And now let's take a look at our MEAC Players of the Week. You see Mr. Cash. You see Tracy White, Defensive Player of the Week. How about James McCall, the offensive? And look at Leon McCampbell, the Rookie of the Week, South Carolina State. 12 of 27, 151 yards and four touchdowns. The MEAC Players of the Week. Some exciting young men. Tracy White, what a linebacker for Howard. Look at that. 13 tackles, 7 solo one interception and one sack and how about mr james mccall out of hampton we'll see him next week graded out 92 percent 599 yards total offense not bad at all so that means we'll see a couple of those uh players next week when we get to hampton and then again the following week when uh the regular season concludes on me me at college football saturday november 11th that was a 19 yard rush there by Mr. Cornelius Gary that we just saw that brings us to the situation we're at with the ball on the 33-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Watch this great fake here, Mark. That's just a great field generalship. Mm, what a great play. And Mackins is sacked as we come back to live action. Bringing Mackins down was Aaron Shepard, number 42, along with some others, but there's a flag down on the play. Tackle kind of high. Mackin's making the uh, indication he thought he was face mask. Forty-one seconds to go, just before halftime, and the penalty is indeed against Bethune Cookman. And they continue to mount. And Coach Wyatt is trying to get some kind of clarification. I think he wants a timeout to put a bug in the officials' ear. Foul, face mask. On the defense. 
15-yard penalty. First down. And that is a huge 15-yard penalty. The ball was on the 33-yard line. And that means the officials will bring it all the way down to the 17. Boy, he is way out there on the field. He wants he, he tried to get a timeout and had to now now he wants to talk to coach while the referee Sam Jones. Boy, to be a fly on the shoulder in that conversation right now. Now see that's one time where I want the microphone to be turned on. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey Sam. <laughs> Let me talk to you about some property investments. And then we take a look at North Carolina A&T's Greyhound Quick Facts. Founded in 1891, 7,500 students strong, as we've been mentioning, known as the Aggies. Colors of blue and gold. One of the charter members of our illustrious conference, joining in 1970. One of the charter members. You got it. When it was all put together, the Aggies of North Carolina A&T were there. And what about Bethune Cookman? Founded in 1904, Mary McLeod yep. Bethune. Yes, indeed. One of the great civil rights leaders and pioneers of this country. Bethune Cookman College, 2,400 students. Nicknamed the Wildcats. Can you put on the maroon and gold? And pound on your chest that you're the best. 1979, when they came into the MEAC. And you know, the MEAC was founded by teams coming from the CIAA, a Division II conference, and the SIAC, a Division II conference. A&T was a member of the CIAA. And Phil Cookman, one of the more successful SIAC programs. First and ten. Mackins back to pass. Mackins in the end zone. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T. So Damian Phillips. Damian Phillips on the touchdown. Mackins sets right in the pocket with his former high school teammate. Hitting him on the post route in the end zone, and that's something that they're used to doing down in West Charlotte. Number 17. Wow, wow. number 12 gets a 17-yard touchdown for Mackins. You said he had a gun, Mark. We saw him load it up and shoot. That's a sight adjustment between a quarterback and a receiver that's been playing a lot of street ball together for a long time. Dawkins with the extra point. And it's no good. It's 16-7. North Carolina A&T has the lead. 35 seconds left before halftime. And Mark, well, tell me about it. Side, side adjustment. Quarterback just sets in the pocket, and he splits the secondary. And that's a strike. Well, I tell you, you talk about threading the needle, and Phillips just climbed the ladder to bring it in. And there, there's some celebrating for you. Throwing it to the band. And homecoming is a day where you embrace everybody. And I'm just wondering, will that cost A&T? Joy and jubilation. There he is. You see him on the sideline. Players getting excited about it. Keith Mackin, 17-yard touchdown strike to number 12, Damian Phillips. 17 yards. Aggies have the lead, 16 to 7. They can wave the flag. The fans are getting excited, getting a little rowdy about it, getting a little <laughs> about it, about it. And there he is, Bill Hayes, where the expression has not changed. The man who wants Ronnie, to win it all. Ronnie, I think I have to translate what you said for those who are cool and paired. That means that people are... I could translate it for them. Uh, Get with the program. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to be embracing. It's homecoming. What you said was... Oh, I wasn't embracing? No. I'm embracing you right now, uh, Mark. Please. Okay? I, know. Right. I got love for you. Is that why you stuck me in the back? <laughs> That's what you got me? Stuck me in the back. Ouch. That hurt. Oh, please. <laughs> Won't you stop, my brother? <laughs> like no other? Once again, for the cool impaired, uh, Ronnie just said that it's becoming extremely enthusiastic and people are beginning to enjoy themselves just All a little right. bit. We know you are the fool with a capital F. Okay. No, that's Six. Capital fool. <laughs> okay. 16 7 is our score. We're having a good time. Bringing love, bringing flavor. It's homecoming 2000 here in Greensboro. Antonio Stanley. Trouble. Stanley still on his feet. Stanley made something happen because, let's face it, he picked that ball up at the eight-yard line and still was able to make a return to the 24. Charles Roberts got a lesson from Mr. Stanley that time. Senior took the freshman to school. And now, Coach Wyatt, you know he's an aggressive personality. You know he's the type of guy that likes to live on the edge and take chances. With 23 seconds to go, look for Woolard. 
to start attacking downfield. And it's time for the Stanleys and the lashes of the world to step up and make plays. The one thing that Bethune-Cookman will not do is go down easy. Let's no. face it, this is a team that is 7-0. They have come from behind. Guess what? Another quarterback is coming to the game for Bethune-Cookman. Alan Super, third-string quarterback. A freshman. Let's see what happens here. A red-shirt freshman, Alan Super. And he executed all right. He just downed the ball with <laughs> one knee. You just could never take Bethune-Cookman and think they're going to just go down to a knee immediately. They wanted to see what the defense was going to do as far as the reaction was concerned. That will do it. That will be our halftime score. We've got the NUE band show coming your way, followed by halftime highlights, and then, of course, the Greyhound band show. It is 16-7. The North Carolina A&T Aggies with the lead at home coming, and we've got a halftime show that you don't want to miss. One guy who has to be happy with what's been happening right now is Bill Hayes, who's standing down with Al Mr. Smith. Thanks, guys. Bill Hayes, you got to be happy with the effort your team put together in the first half, a strong effort. Well, special teams have been big for us. Uh, got a punt return and several Harrys, so I'm real pleased with our special teams. Uh, and then Keith Mackins went in and threw a big touchdown pass, and that was that, 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 that was great. You know, our defense has been playing really well. Uh, Troutman will probably be back in the second half, though, and he poses a whole different problem. What adjustments do you make at the halftime break? Well, we want to throw the ball deep a lot more. Uh, we, that's what we plan to do, and so we want to do that. We want to try to loosen that secondary up. They're playing a lot of man by throwing the ball deep and uh, uh, keep doing what we're doing on defense. Coach Bill Hayes, thank you very much. He's got to be happy with the way his Aggies have played in the first half, guys. It's 16-7 A&T at the break. Back to you. All right, Sam Smith, we appreciate it so much. We've got a band show coming your way. It's me at College Football Saturday. Aggies leading 16-7. I leave you a responsibility for young people. Bethune-Cookman College is an enlightening educational journey which inspires young men and women to succeed. For nearly a century, this private United Methodist College has maintained an international reputation for academic excellence and moral leadership. Its modern campus and facilities provide students unparalleled opportunities for learning. Bright futures begin at Bethune-Cookman College. Football is the halftime, the band show. Coming up, it's the marching pride of the Wildcats, Bethune Cookman's marching band. And the NUE band show. simply too good to be number one. Think about it as the band plays. Congratulations.
a different kind of party. So as we said, these folks are pumped, and I'm sure, look, watch this. I think here comes a drum major right now. This is quality stuff right here. They've been waiting all afternoon to find out if they could get a ball in, and the Aggie a drum major has made his appearance, and they are ready to cut a mean rug here in Aggie Stadium. The one thing you can always expect to see is great things here at North Carolina A&T. Talk about halftime in a 16 to 7. The Aggies are lifting off. Will they lift off and win it all? We'll find out much more when Al Greyhound Halftime Show comes back with the Greyhound Band Show next on MEAC College Football Saturday. That magnificent interface between the strong liberal arts tradition and the high-tech mode to produce the place where dreamers become achievers, from astronauts to presidents. North Carolina A&T State University, where the best get better. And we're back, 16-7. It's homecoming. Now it's time for the Greyhound portion of our band show. And yes, it's time for the Aggies to take Center City. game in Greensboro, North Carolina, as the Aggies of North Carolina A&T are happy for their hometown crowd as they lead it 16-7. to 7. 
over BCC Bethune-Cookman as we look at the Jefferson Pilot Building. And right now, lighting up the daytime is the Aggies. Now for a look at Alzerox stats and Mark Gray, it is quite obvious who's winning this game and why, because a and has 115 yards rushing, and one young man, Maurice Hicks, has 99 of those yards on 15 carries. Well, chances are if Maurice Hicks has almost 100 yards at the end of the first half that the Aggies are going to be well ahead in the ball game. And, you know, Bethune-Cookman give their defense a lot of credit because the offense was in terrible, uh, put the defense in terrible positions. And while we got, before we go to the second half, let's go downstairs and get another report. Here's Sam Smith. Thanks, guys. The word on Patel Troutman is that they're going to let him take a couple of practice snaps before Bethune-Cookman takes the field on offense. The problem is not the fact that he can't run around with the sore left shoulder. The problem is taking the snaps. That's where he's feeling the most pain. So it's just a matter of how much his pain threshold is, whether he can take the snap. If he can take the snap, he's going to play. Back to you guys. Sam Smith, we thank you for that information. And we saw Mr. Troutman, and there he is. He looks like he's ready to play. And here's a kid that has so much when it comes to guts oh, and man. attitude, he's, intestinal fortitude. Yeah. He's got fire. He's got that fire in the eyes that everybody, all coaches like to talk about. If you want to go back to one of those high school coaching analogies that coaches used to always throw on you when you were playing. But, you know, you talk about a rough first half for Bethune-Cookman. Yeah, they do lose Patel Troutman, and we don't know if we'll see him back. It was so bad that the wind actually blew the game plans of the Bethune-Cookman coaches clean out of the stadium. Now, in some stadiums that you get to, a lot of the fans, would hide them, would tear them up, would burn them. The folks here in Greensboro gave them back to the Bethune-Cookman coaches, so they do have their notes to refer to, and maybe that'll make a difference in the second half. You know, this has been homecoming for North Carolina A&T, and as I've stated so often during the broadcast reunion-type setting, but it's been great for me because I have so much family here in North Carolina, and my cousins here in Greensboro, Bob and Terry Booker, have been so gracious. I got an opportunity to stay with them last night, and mm -hmm. my Uncle Malcolm, one of the oldest members of the family, is coming up from Fayetteville, and I got cousins coming up from Lawnburg, so we're going to have big old dinner tonight. That, we're going to have some chitlins and we're going to have some food. I had mine last gonna, night. And we're going to get down. <laughs> I love coming home. <laughs> chitlins, collard greens, the whole nine. <laughs> All right, we're underway with second half action. Eric Lash picks yeah. it up. And there's some flags thrown down. It was an onside kick. Bethune Cookman came out trying to be aggressive. I'm anxious to see whether or not the ball went 10 yards because there was definitely contact before the Aggies made possession. And that was Racine Mathis, a very speedy DB, number 16. He was able to land on the ball and start things here in the second half. Got the major summit meeting going on once again. But you're absolutely right, Ronnie. Homecoming is definitely about reminiscing, catching up with old friends and family, eating tons of good food. Let's take a look at it right here. This is Mathis bearing down. It's an onside kick, trying to grab the ball. And there was contact clean before the Aggies had an opportunity to catch the ball. So it'll be interesting to watch Sam Jones and the rest of the, his officiating posse adjudicate, adjudicate pardon me, this decision. Oh. oh this, this could be a, a, an important call. It could really set the tone for the second half. Well, we'll see what happens, Mark. I mean, it's a situation where, let's face it, taking a look at it, obviously from our vantage point. Pass interference against Bethune-Cookman. A bit overzealous, shall we say, in terms of uh, getting to the football. Well, let's face it. Alvin White's Bethune-Cookman Wildcats have to look forward to any advantage. With the opportunity to, check, to get the kick. Yeah. On the kicking team. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. So is that a spot foul? And how, they, that explanation did not work for Coach Wyatt. And Coach Wyatt, who has seen his fair share of controversial calls in this rivalry, which Bethune-Cookman leads by three games. You know what? Hurricane Wyatt just landed in Greensboro. 
He's upset. I think there's a new hurricane about to land in Greensboro. So the Aggies will get the ball at the spot of the foul. So they will take over in Bethune-Cookman territory for their first offensive series of the second half, leading by nine. And that places the ball on the 47-yard line. It's a first down. And once again, the Aggies in the Wildcats territory. And it seems like every time they get in the Wildcats territory, they score. It seems that way, doesn't it? You know, you enjoy the controversy of the two teams, how things are being handled, what is being said. You know, I was watching one of the websites that is known for getting MEAC fans involved in the game. That's MEACfans.com. And, man, did you see some of the postings on that website? This was a game that was so widely anticipated. Sure. And you talk about smack being talked. <laughs> man, going back and forth, what you got to do. You don't have a real team. But Thune Cookman hasn't faced anybody yet. You're beating up on Division II schools. Coming here, pounding <laughs> your chest with a 4-0 record. Aggies 5-2 and two saying we're the best. We slipped up against Howard. We shouldn't have lost the game. 17-16. I mean, take a look. And we have a stat. At the last three possessions, the last five possessions for North Carolina A&T against Howard in a game they shouldn't have lost, but they did lose 17 to 16. And when you look at it, it was a they lost errors. the game. Yeah. If North Carolina A&T does not have those costly turnovers, mm -hmm. they come into this game, and you see it, the last five possessions against Howard, punt, punt, interception, fumble, and interception. And look where they had the ball. Howard's 42nd. Howard's 46 yard line. Hey, man, you can't blow opportunities like that. End it around again, but this time it goes back to battle. Battle goes deep. He finds Bryson. Bryson, look at him go. The big tight end. He's in the end zone. The big buddy. Oh, my goodness. Bryson, M-E-A, see you later. And take a load with you if you know what I'm talking about. Carrying the mail, boy. a and goes to the bag of tricks. Bill Hayes said at the end of the first half he wanted to stretch the defense. He wanted to get the ball deep downfield. He comes with the flea flicker, and he hits his big tight end, Bryson, in the center of the field, and it leads to six points. But we've got a flag down. Billy Brock in the back, above the waist, on the offensive team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Did you see that? Oh. All for naught. Big Marcus Bryson, number 88. What a play. You know, Bill Hayes told Steve Smith exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to put the ball in the air. Talk about getting excited, folks. When you see a play like that, that's the kind of play that gets your juices going. And anytime you pull out and put the conservative playbook down, that's exactly what they did in the second half. I'm anxious to see where this uh, illegal block is, but it starts with Alestock, who gives it. I think that was to help. And this is a strike. Finding his quarterback, his tight end in the center of the field, and that might have been the illegal block in the back right there. Wow, and I'm not even quite sure that was a block that needed to be made. Before the snap, false start, movement on the offensive line, five-yard penalty, first down. So the Aggies, who aren't as penalized statistically per game, like Bethune-Cookman, now have eight penalties on the afternoon compared to four for the Wildcats. Murray Six has stopped. The reason why, once again, Duke Cookman's defense. Boy, I tell you, they are just they're stacking it inside, and it's going to be tough for A&T to run that ball up the middle, which is where they want to go in the second half. These linebackers for Bethune-Cookman, as well as their defensive front, it's a solid unit. They're big, they're physical, they're quick. It's almost like if you take the quickness element from Florida A&M's defense and add the power of A&T's, you basically have what Bethune-Cookman does. Third down ball on the 34, 14 yards to go for a first down. Battle on the play action. Pass incomplete going to Marcus Bryson. Lucky that time that that wasn't picked off because that was almost a bit of a dying quail being thrown out there into the flat. And fortunately for the Aggie fans, uh, one of their big linebackers, Joe Giddens, who plays a strong safety like a good linebacker does, he was out there in coverage. 
I still don't see number one in the, in, in the lineup. That's Ronaldo North. And I guess I'll continue to beat that horse, but this is a kid averaging over 26 yards per catch. And this is where North Carolina A&T struggles. Third down percentage less than 25%. Third and 13. Had some contact. That's Bethune. Looks like that might have been Quentin Lewis, the nose tackle that made contact with Victor Marte. Offside on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's five yards, but it's still nowhere close for first down. That'll make it third and nine yards to go for first down. 16-7 is our score. North Carolina a and with the league on this homecoming afternoon. And what a gorgeous day in Greensboro it is. And what a beautiful sight seeing all the people that are here. You see the penalties in the yards right there. And uh, you can't make mistakes. Someone will capitalize. Battle back to pass. Ball is intercepted. And once again, that was Mathis. That is his 10th interception on the season. This young man leads the entire nation in interceptions with 10. Well, Rasheen Mathis. We're seeing a guy that not only can cover, but he just simply has a nose of the ball. Let's take a look at Rasheen's record-setting interceptions this season. He has picked off a pass just about against everybody. This is... This is against Delaware State. That's where it began. He's That's got right. another he had one. Four interceptions in that Delaware State game. That was on the 7th of October, and that is an all-time single-game record in the MIAC. See, setting in the pocket, Mathis <laughs> finds the other Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they kissing cousins or boys like that. <laughs> So apparently Willard is going to stay in at quarterback. Now let's take a look. Let's take a look at interception number 10. Great use of the tip drill. You know, this ball is deflected, tried to force it over the middle, and he just locks in on it and hauls it in. Maybe his, one of his more easier interceptions, but 10 interceptions, that's the kind of stuff pro scouts will definitely take a look at. You know, the one thing I enjoy about it is this young man is in the right spot at the right time. Rasheen Mathis, 10th interception this season. Second and seven. And this team is totally different without Patel Troutman in the game. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That allows the linebackers and those hybrid linebackers, what they call the whip and the Ram linebackers to just play aggressive and unabated. And Parrish is remaining down on the field. Yeah, T.J. Parrish, and that's another big blow if he goes down. He's gotten up on his own. But, you know, with Trotman not in the game, Gary Willett has his hands full. Let's go downstairs to Sam Smith, who's got an update on Patel Troutman. Thanks, guys. Patel Troutman is out for the game with that AC sprain in his left shoulders. The doctors didn't want to take a chance on him further injuring the shoulder. They're going to take him back home to Daytona Beach and take x-rays on the shoulder at that point. But right now, a big blow for the BCC offense. Patel Troutman out for the game. Back to you. What a telling story with Patel Troutman being out for the game because that could be their season right then and there. 7-0 coming into this game. Well, it's going up. And this ball might be picked off. It was almost, it almost was. But what an effort that time. The receiver down there in triple coverage goes up. I believe that was Eric Lask. Montreal Pittman almost came up with the interception. That was Antonio Stanley once again. You see it in slow motion as Pittman, number 24, will come into your screen and on the tip as Stanley goes up against the tall trees. Remember, Antonio Stanley is not the tallest of the wide receivers. Watch him out there in the land of the Giants. Watch number 24 come into the screen. You see it there. And he almost got it. And Lash was there as well. Here comes that punt. All kinds of trouble. Caldwell, watch him. Caldwell still on his feet. Caldwell with a nifty return. I remember you talking about him a couple of weeks ago. He's an explosive, exciting player. And we've got a lot more explosive excitement when we come back to Greensboro. North Carolina A&T leads 16-7. Looks like that undefeated record of the Wildcats is going to go up with the loss. You see it, the road to the goal. And right now, it could come down to Hampton in North Carolina A&T because Bethune-Cookman has Hampton next week. 
And you see the road for North Carolina A&T might look a little easier with Delaware State. And then, of course, the following week, it's Bethune-Cookman at Howard. And then it's North Carolina A&T at Hampton. The Aggies finish out against South Carolina State. Well, of course, Wildcats finish in that big classic down in Florida against their famed rival, FAMU. So you know what? Troutman injured that same shoulder against Hampton last season. Right. Now they're going into Hampton without him. And I'm telling you, the MEAC title right now is very much up for grabs. Depending on the outcome of this game, guess who could hold, hold the key to all Hampton. the goodies? <laughs> it's all said and done. Well, it, the number one scorer in the country, Montrell Coley in the Hampton Pirates. Well, you know, and he's averaging over 16 points a game. But one thing about it, Bethune Cookman's road to the gold has gotten a lot rocky if they a lot rockier if they don't have a healthy Troutman. If they a totally different team, as you said, offensively, but remember they run the football and they play great defense. And those are two ingredient, uh, ingredients, I should say, in, in terms of your recipe that you need to contend. So oftentimes you look at a quarterback who has such an impact on their offense, but they might have to call a different game, but there's enough talent out there for them to do some things. All, all's not lost totally without Troutman in the contest. All right, it's Aggie country. Ball is on the four-yard line. First down, 10 to go. And it's just two to go, baby. <laughs> Ain't no 10 to go. It's first and goal. You know, we've had more filibusters on the field today than they've had in Congress in the last six months. It's just amazing. 16-7 to the score, first and goal. And that time, Hicks was trying to make it to the end zone. And he made it to the three-yard line. Well, that's a different kind of summit meeting right there. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, we have seen this guy take some shots and bounce off tackles and continue to roll. And he just took a lick that time. He seems to enjoy that, though. <laughs> Coach Bill Hayes. And, and you know something? If he was up by 20 points, his expression would still be the same. Second and goal. Atkins to give. Once again, a Hicks. And you talked about that stingy defense. It's alive and well. That is an impressive defense, especially right up the middle that time with Hubbard and Oglesby doing a great job of just collapsing into the center right there. So Matkins is in the ball game right now. We saw him connect. What a touchdown pass in the first half. We saw Bryson, er, we saw Bryson as Maurice Hicks continues with his fourth straight 100-yard game. We saw Bryson earlier. This is a great time to use your tight end right here. Big target, safe pass. Wouldn't be shocked to see A&T go up top to him. Third and goal, ball on the three. And it's Atkins, touchdown. Well, that time they crossed everybody up. They put the pass quarterback in a run package, and he ran the option and took it to the house. And a t is in good shape right now. Got to feel really good about the way things are transpiring here on homecoming. Keith Matkins with the touchdown. This time he took matters into his own hand as the quarterback, number 17. Matkins, touchdown. Good decision. You know, he had, he had a safety valve back there with him. Who, was, who would have been, I'm sure, happy to escort him into the end zone. But Matkins takes it to the house. Job well done for the young man. You know, they said we will see Jason Battle. They said we will see Keith Atkins. They're going for the two-point conversion. Bryson up and good! Bryson! Did you see him? Out of nowhere! Making sure it would happen, and he had some help. My goodness, Darren Dawkins getting it done nice play that time jason battle coming in as the holder gets to the outside and he tossed it to bryson we we look for bryson we were just a play early and this is mackins running that option making a good decision taking it to the house it's 24 to 74 to 7 that's our score 10 16 remaining in the third quarter ronnie duncan mark gray watching the game for you along with sam smith on the sideline Suffice to say, the time has come for Bethune-Cookman to open up the offense just a little something-something here, Ronnie. Danny Solares 
In the kick. That goes to Antonio Stanley. Stanley brought down around the 23-yard line. Now you can see the adjustment that a and made with their special teams coverage that time. It was a center return that was set up once again, which is what sprung Mathis in the first half for that long one that was called back. But they do a good job of staying in their lanes and clamping down on Mathis. And like I said, I think the wide bone is going to have to maybe break the bone a little bit right now to go up top. Charles McDonald. Do you have your shoulder pads on backwards, number 93? Take a look at Charles McDonald. If you look at it closely, the pads are on backwards. Charlie, get with the program, okay? He's in the homecoming swing of things. Backwards. <laughs> homecoming starts at noon, take a little bit of time for everybody to get wound up. But the turnout has been absolutely gorgeous here in Greensboro. And don't think... Movements on the offensive line. And don't think it ends when the gun goes off at the end of the game. You know, Frankie Beverly and Mays performed here last night. Yes. Snoop Doggy Dogg's in town tonight. Did you know that? Last time, BCC had three consecutive winning seasons, 76, 77, and 78. But that man right there, Alvin Wyatt, is trying to pull off the trifecta this year. And he's well on his way with that 7 and 0 start. My goodness. <laughs> Alan Suber, the quarterback, number seven. Well, Something has got to happen quickly right now for Bethune Cookman. Yeah. I mean, Suber is the third quarterback they've used. Troutman is out. They'll find out about him later on this season. Well, that Gary Woolard looked like he was pretty confident back there. Looked like he had command of the offense, was able to make some things happen vertically. Unfortunately, his receivers let him down. Point well taken. 9.30 left in the third quarter. Moving on the line once again, and there's a flag. Well, I think that time, Torrance Green, the se red shirt senior, beat the snap count. Five yard penalty against the Wildcats. Coach Wyatt definitely likes to use the run game to ignite his offense, but they have so much speed and so much talent at the skill players. Somebody's got to take a shot at trying to stretch this Aggie defense right now. Super rolling out. Super still on his feet. He's managing to stay on his feet. That's a possibility of downfield receiver, and that's Eric Lash, and that could be a first down for Bethune-Cookman. What a great play for the young man, and a play that could give him the confidence that he needs to get things going for Bethune Cookman. Just a super play by Suber that time. Watch. He's out here. He is dead to right. You talk about Massey out there. He's got a beat on him. You know, look at it. There are three people, and he spins out of it. That's a great move. It's one of those moves that are shaky like collard greens, fella. Then he finds, he gets outside, and he delivers a strike, and Lask hauls it in. So a great individual effort that time by Suber, and Lask giving his quarterback a safety valve. Super this time, gains a yard on the play, crosses the 35 to the 36-yard line. Boy, the Wildcats are definitely moving like there's still a, and, and there is a lot of time left here, but the ebb and flow of this game, you definitely want to put the pressure on, see if you can get a score here and make it tight in the fourth quarter. Second and nine will be the situation for the Wildcats. Lask is limping off just a little bit. This has been a physical game. Bethune Cookman may come out of here by more beat down from an injury standpoint than anything on the scoreboard. Super back to pass. Pass incomplete. And that intended for Parrish. The reason that that pass was incomplete is because Sammy Rogers once again was bearing down on the quarterback. And speaking of Rogers, where's Jay all of a sudden? We have not called Jay Rogers' name in quite a while, and I'm just wondering, is he banged up a little bit? They were able to run the ball effectively when he had him Indeed. in the game. First half of the game, Jay Rogers won the bright spots for Bethune Cookman. Managed 19 yards on just eight carries in the first half. Super stats. Well, they're pretty young because he's just gotten in the game. One of three, 41 yards. 
Schubert back to pass, but once again, oh, it's a touchdown, and I'm telling you, interception. I thought it was a touchdown because the big fellow almost got there and got inside. I really thought he almost had daylight. I thought he did, too. Wow, what a play that time. And once again, Sammy Rogers doesn't get a sack. Doesn't get a tackle, but give him an assist with the pressure that he got. Look, 41 coming from the left side of your screen, bearing down on Suber, forces him to release early, and then it is picked off by one of the big nasties up front who's able to move like a regular old ice wagon inside the red zone. Asita Alabade. There he is. Sammy Rogers, the man putting on the heat. Asita almost had you into the end zone. <laughs> You had him into the end zone. I had him in the end zone. <laughs> so Bethune Cook. I'm having flashbacks of last season or something. <laughs> <laughs> you just couldn't believe a guy that big got up that high to catch that pass. No, nah, you know what? I really thought he was going to make it in yeah. the end zone for a touchdown. But it was the interception. Asita, good job for you. He still made the highlights. <laughs> he doesn't get an MEAC you later. No, he doesn't. Have we been keeping that staff? Do we have somebody who leads the league in the NBA simulators? Uh oh, it's easy. Who? Oh. It's Montreal Cole. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with that. Well, here comes Hicks. <laughs> Hicks to the five. Tell me he's not a special man, number 22, Maurice Hicks. I thought that he was getting a little upset that he didn't make the MEAC later. Please. <laughs> Watch this. Individual effort once again. Good job of seal blocking, but he just breaks one tackle there, runs into a pack, breaks three tackles there, spins out of another one, breaks another tackle, and he's on down inside the five-yard line. Just a tremendous performer is Hicks. He's physical, he's got speed, and he makes people come up, try to tackle him, pay the price. 14 yards on the carry, Maurice Hicks. Once again, first in goal. Hicks with the carry. Hicks into the end zone. And once again, Maurice Hicks has put it on the board. Give it to me, man. Give it to me. NBA, see you later. That's right. Give him a see you later. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Maurice Hicks, five-yard touchdown. North Carolina A&T. Once again, the Aggies putting it on. And the homecoming crowd is starting to get the dogs. Who let the dogs out? It's homecoming, baby. And the Aggies are barking up a storm. <laughs> that is tremendous. And it is. Pops got to enjoy this. And moms. Cutting Ray Ray. Boom skillet. <laughs> Bad snap. And it's going to stay at 30 to 7. It's 37. North Carolina A&T. Hey, I called a false touchdown, but Mr. Hicks made sure he got to the end zone with a real touchdown. 30 to 7 A&T. Try your scene in today. The Aggies claim the Black College National Championship a year ago. Well, their coach, Bill Hayes, was the coach of the year in Black College football and beyond. Once again, the Aggies. You don't have to put a collar on them. They've been let loose. Who let the dogs out? It's evident. Look at the score. 30 to 7, North Carolina A&T. 634 remaining in the third quarter. Solares set the kick. Set to receive it, Antonio Stanley. That was a great kick. Now let's take a look at our National Car Rental Scoring Drive. And you know National Car means go. There he is, the young man who can do it all by himself sometimes. And he reads his blockers, Maurice Hicks. Yeah, but he also has that jet where he can explode into the secondary and he makes people pay for coming up and run support and trying to tackle them. You talk about... Guys like he and Montrell Coley, uh, just tremendously talented running backs. There's a National Car Rental scoring drive. Remember, green means go with National Car Rental. Call 1-800-CAR-RENT or book online at www.nationalcar.com. Wow. Look at that. Over 29,000, close to 30,000 folks here. And you got to be happy about that at Aggie Stadium. And we've got it all for you on MEAC College Football Saturday. Nice effort that time. That was a great catch that time. Terran Porter. Oh, and they don't give it to him. Wow. Right in front of Coach Wyatt. <laughs> and he doesn't like that. You talk about pouring salt into an open wound. 
Boy, and the referee Sam Jones has to go over there and try to restore some order. Boy, that was just great work all the way around that time. It has been that kind of afternoon for Bethune-Cookman here in Greensboro. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong, from losing their quarterback to their starting quarterback with an interception and a fumble. It has not been a banner day at all, and they get it right. They give him the first day. Yeah, that was a great catch. Yeah, they rethought it, and I think the uh, referee came over and overruled his side judge. And the other thing is that you've got a head coach who does not give up, who is relentless in his pursuit of excellence. And that is, of course, Alvin Wyatt. So we're rolling. And that ball is out of bounds. Just trying anything at this point to try to get the ball into the hands of Antonio Stanley. And Stanley is the kind of guy that Suber is going to have to bond with. And, and look at Bill Hayes. A little bit exercise right now. And it must have been, he, he's talking to the linesman right now. And when you're up by 23, it <laughs> has to be a little something, <laughs> a, a, a whole lot of something to tee you off. Before you online. Second and ten. Suber finds Antonio Stanley. Stanley with a first down for the Wildcats. There's a late flag that comes in there, and I just hope it's not a face mask being called. This looks like one of those high tackles that often looks like a face mask. An illy. Wow. Let's take a look at that one one more time. This is after the catch, and, well, I don't know. Was that face mask or was that face shoulder man. pad? On the defense. Five-yard penalty. Okay. First down. Well, it is, it was, there was a face mask, if you look at it again in slow motion, but it happened when the play was totally over. But the official saw it otherwise. Maybe this is makeup. But at least it was only a five-yard face mask, the incidental foul. you got to protect those faces, man. It's homecoming. First down, ball on the 37. Super flushed out of the pocket. He made a wise decision that time for a quarterback. Picked up about six yards on the play. Well, the dance around here doesn't start until about 9 or 10 o'clock this evening, Eastern time. But you saw some nice dance moves by Super to get out of trouble that time. Nice feet. Feet just kept moving. Looking around, feeling his spot, and then turning a negative play into something positive. This kid has some tools. He's got quick feet, nice arm. Apparently, he reads the defense pretty well. Look who's waiting in the wings when Patel Troutman graduates. Ball on the 34. Second down. Seven to go. Ball goes up for Stanley. And out of bounds. Lots of pressure. <laughs> Ray, coming from the Aggies. Ray Massey coming up, a zone blitz up the middle. They haven't been sending Little and Massey a great deal on the blitz packages this afternoon, but those guys in basic base coverages coming in blitz situation and filling holes have done an outstanding job of clamping down on the middle. And we still have not seen a Jay Rogers sighting. And look, that's the end zone sitting on the track here at Aggie Stadium. Now, we got 29,000 people in here this afternoon. I tell you, this building is built for maybe 18, 20. It is literally bulging at the seams. Suber, B.J. Little was in pursuit. Little back on his feet, still in pursuit. Suber's just backing that thing up, and he's got to get rid of it. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> he backed it up. He was in rewind. <laughs> oh my goodness I'm starting to say Forrest you're running the wrong way <laughs> from the tales of Rudy <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> and that's what he's saying what are you doing that for so we have was there a penalty on here or something Super does a great job if you ask me just escaping the sack that's worth the price of admission. That will make the highlight reel, and it didn't gain a yard. 
That's when you know <laughs> you have done something proper. And now Bethune-Cookman confused offensively, letting the playcock go all the way down to three seconds. They have to take a timeout. Sam Smith is on the sidelines with a special guest, Sam. Thanks, guys. I'm joined by ANT Athletic Director Alfonso Scandrett. Dr. Scandrett, you've got to be excited about what's going on today at Aggie Stadium. Big crowd, big performance from your team, and all around perfect day. Oh, yes, it is. We've got a lot of people here. It is exciting. Uh, new facilities, uh, a lot of people come home. It's very exciting. And the score is exciting, too. Talk about some of the exciting additions that you've made here since becoming Athletic Director. New lights here at the stadium, a brand new field house. You guys are really putting a whole lot of money into the ANT Athletic Department. Yes, we are. We want to be competitive with our, our other schools, and so we want to improve our facilities by building a new field house, putting more lights in, so the community can use it also. That's what the goal is, and we also want to put a new track in, too. Talk about Aggie Pride. It is such, and everyone talks about Aggie Pride when you talk about ANT. What kind of advantage does it give you competitively, not only on the football field, but in other sports, such as basketball? Well, I'll tell you what, to know what Aggie Pride really is, you just got to look around this, this crowd. Uh, these Aggies are very proud of their team, very proud of the institution, and that's what Aggie Pride is about. The academics, the support that they give the athletics department, and all of our other academic departments, too. That's what Aggie Pride is about, and I think a lot of our competitors know that. Thank you very much, Dr. Alfonso Scantret, ANT Athletic Director. Very exciting times going on here on Aggie Campus. Back to you guys. Look at Suber with the touchdown. I tell you what, Aggie Pride couldn't stop that run. <laughs> I tell you, 34-yard touchdown by Alan Suber. The pitter-patter of the quick feet of the redshirt freshman quarterback, and suddenly Bethune Cookman is uh, quietly gotten back into this contest. This is a great job of field generalship, staying within yourself and just making something happen. Look, the blitz came. That's, he's going to run away from Little. Massey, he's going to outrun Massey. By this point, no, everybody has a beat on him, but nobody can catch him, and he takes it to the house. So Bethune hasn't packed it in yet. And he had a little moxie taken into the end zone. Kick for the point after is no good. Wow. So the score will remain at 30-13, North Carolina A&T. And that was Mathis' first extra point that he's missed. And you know what? He had hit 31 straight. Right. The last time he hit 29 straight. <laughs> Guess where the streak stopped? Against North Carolina A&T. <laughs> Danny Mathis would like not to see blue and gold anytime soon. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's something about the blue and gold that that guy just can't. I, I can't. I can't. I can't zero in well. right now. <laughs> Well, now if you're if you're Alvin Wyatt, Ronnie, and you tried one uh, onside kick that worked, albeit you were overzealous getting to the ball, do you try it right now? Oh, most definitely. I mean, let's face it, you've got to bring it all out. You've got to let the conservatives playbook take a rest. You've got to try to find a way to get back into this game. Super comes in, and he is able to run effectively with the ball. He's shown enough ability to throw the ball. And let's face it, if Eric Lash, Antonio Stanley, some of those receivers, if you get Parrish, maybe if you get Rodgers to get back into this game and start exerting his great talents, who knows? There he is, the talented young quarterback. Where is Jay Rodgers? <laughs> Where? I mean, you, you can't. The guy is the second leading rusher in the conference. He's averaging almost seven yards a carry, and he has not touched the football. Where, oh, where is Mr. Rogers? Did he, did he take an early flight to Daytona Beach or something? He moved out of the neighborhood. He probably moved into a better neighborhood, one with palm trees and beach sand. <laughs> not like my neighborhood where there are potholes in my lawn. God bless Bristol, Bristol <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> Actually, it's the lovely town of Hartford, thank you. As a matter of fact, we got to start campaigning, man. Sending emails to the Monster Sports Network, ESPN. I want to hear Mark Gray back on the radio on a more regular basis. I think that would be a great thing. I think it would be great, too. And if not, then, then you know. Somewhere else. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I missed the sports groove on the weekend. Yes, it is I the same I Mark Gray. You want to do a new show? Yeah, it's going gonna, gonna, gonna to be called The Fat Show. The you, Fat Show. Remember how Keith Olbermann had the big show? I'm going to have The Fat Show. I don't remember anything Keith <laughs> Olbermann has ever done. Wow. That, my friend, may qualify as a shot. He was a hero, but now he's a zero. Wow. Who are you, Kent Benson, elbowing hey. Kareem? No, I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> what do you mean, Kent Benson, elbowing Kareem? <laughs> What the heck are you talking about? Just took that shot in there, man. Nah, uh, no, 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 no. You say Maurice Lucas, huh? Come on. Ain't too many people Kareem ever punked in the league. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and he punked Vincent. He was never the same. <laughs> oh, man. You see, Bob Knight wasn't there to protect him. <laughs> True. Scott May either. Hey, Scott May's got an exceptional son. Talk about Hampton University. They're picking up a prize basketball recruit by a young man by the name of Devin Green, 6'5", comes out of Columbus, Ohio, Beach Cross High School, averaged only 10 points a game, but he's 6'5", he's a point guard, and this kid has like a 3.5 cumulative average, and he is excited and delighted about being an early recruit. He had been recruited by Iowa, Ohio State, Penn State, I mean, tremendous big schools, and this young man said, hey, I want to go to an historically black college and university. I have a cousin. Wow, great individual effort that time by a &T. Boy, I tell you, he was stopped for bad near the goal line. Curtis Deloitte. And sheer individual effort gets it out all the way to the 20-yard line. He dead to rights right here. Breaks one tackle, runs into his teammate. He stopped at about the two-yard line. But you know something? I'm going absolutely nowhere, fellas. So let me get out of my way. Just move. And he just takes it on down up near the 20-yard line. Just an outstanding effort that time, but individual effort. That's just, you know, we saw Isaac Brown from Florida and them do the same thing as a single safety a couple of weeks ago. That's just great stuff. Ian Allstock on the run, number 26. First time we've had opportunities here from the senior. They have running back a two-headed monster legitimately at quarterback but in terms of what a t likes to do from a running back standpoint a standpoint they have four running backs and they beat up on you in a variety of different ways one of those is adrian parks who at the beginning of the season was the man picking up all the yards i mean it hasn't been let's face it until the last maybe five weeks that maurice hicks has become the featured running back in this offense hicks with four straight 100 yard games and there's a fumble. Looks like it was recovered by the Aggies. Boy, I'll tell you, couldn't that, couldn't that have uh, altered the dynamic of this one? Ian Allstott recovered the fumble. Now see, this is Matkins, and it's a blitz. Now, that's a good job of blocking that time by Kinlock to push the pressure away to give him a lane to run. But then he stripped. And boy, it was oh so close to the momentum shifting back to the side of Burgundy and goal. So it's third and seven. Matkins in at the quarterback. We know he likes to throw. A situation where you got to look at a kid like Caldwell in a situation like that. That was Joe Giddens, number 41, coming in, causing that fumble. You see they're shoring up the middle right now. That was Adrian Parks on the run. They got good pressure that time. Coming right up the gut unabated was Josh Oglesby to put the pressure on and you know a t is not in a position right now to go into this four corners version of football offense got to think about attacking still more than 17 minutes to play flag on the play and the a t players are signaling that's going to be against the Wildcats I think the confidence of that last drive I think the confidence that Bethune-Cookman's offense gained from scoring on that last drive will be a carryover effect for this drive. All right. That means they're going to have to back it up. So he's going to have to kick this one from perhaps in the end zone. He's at the four-yard line. Antonio Stanley set to receive on the punt. That snap. That is not a good one. It's going to land around the 49, but there's a flag on the play. Rough in the kick. And I think you know, we've been wondering basically about what has happened to Jay Rogers and you know, let's face it, there could have been a possibility because of the hard hitting of that blue depth defense. Jay got bumped up. He may have gotten bruised and banged a little bit, but this is a killer blow 
for Bethune Cookman. A roughing the kicker penalty gives AT the ball back after the wild catch. The kicker on the defense. A five yard penalty still falls down. Wow, that's a tough, tough call. Let's go downstairs to Sam Smith, who has an update on Troutman as well as Jay Rogers. Sam? Thanks, guys. You guys have been wondering, where is Jay Rogers been in the second half? Well, because of the situation with Bethune falling so far behind, they brought in running backs that can block for the passer, Alan Suber, and can protect him in the pocket. The news, however, is worse for Patel Troutman. Doctors now say he has a broken collarbone, definitely out for the game, and out for the foreseeable future, possibly for the remainder of the season. So the breaks just get worse for BCC. Back to you guys. Antonio Stanley on the punt return. Stanley still on his feet. He's spinning out. If Stanley gets some daybreak, you never know what can oh, happen. There it is. He's missed it's it. Going. He's at. He's going to M-E-A. See you later. You just had the feeling sooner or later he was going to pop one again. We've got a football game in Greensboro. This is just an outstanding effort. Unbelievable. Antonio Stanley, they call him Mr. Excitement, won the leading kickoff and puck return specialist in the country. And all of a sudden, the Wildcat Golden Ladies are very excited. Look what he does. Spinning around, juking, Watch making sure cut. nobody gets him. And what I like about him is the serious uh. cut. Boy, is he cutting up something. That was a 67-yard return for a touchdown by that young man, Antonio Stanley. And just like that, the Wildcats can pull to within 10 going into the final quarter. And all that they've been through, mistakes, turnovers, injuries, they can feel great about themselves because they've gotten themselves back into a position to win this game. Oh, what a play. 30-19 is our score right now. And Bill Hayes is preaching to his group, you can never sleep on Bethune-Cookman. Remember, this is a team that has not lost this season. They don't know what losing is all about this season. Right. They are 7-0. They recognize the importance of winning the MEAC is on the line in this game. And now, now the band and the partisan who have come all and made ready the trip flex. all the way. Oh, they ready Daytona. to flex, man. They got reason to dance now, dog. Right, we got ourselves a game. This give is me some it. pound on that. You, you, we got ourselves a game, young fella. Okay. Oh, I love that. You're 34 and I'm 42 and you call me young fella. Youngin. <laughs> oh, this is Mark a great Gray. game. It's Mark Gray, you know it's all about it. it, it, it this is great stuff. You I just had a feeling that a t with their conservative offensive approach doesn't slam the door on the opposition. They do not have a finish the opposition off type of offense. You leave the door cracked. A team like the Phil Cookman will slip right back in. And they're going to go for the two-point conversion, which would make it, what, a nine-point game? Super rolling out. Super. That's a nice play. And that's a two-point conversion. Boy, that's Super going to perish. And what a beautiful play. Well, Are they not calling it? Wait a minute, Alvin Wyatt thinking it is offside. Is that the call or was that an Ill illegal participation type of thing? Were Let's they 12 see. players on the field? Offensive, ineligible, downfield, wow. five-yard penalty, reach right. Well, they got to try it one more time, but this time he's bringing in now, the field goal unit. Ronnie, <laughs> at the risk of second-guessing the officials, illegal lineman downfield on a two-point conversion when you've only got two yards between the goal line and where the ball is snapped, got to wonder about that one, baby. Oh, gotta you have wonder. to, Mark. You really have to, and it's a situation That's that I'm almost sure that when we see this again, I, I want to see exactly where it's at. And it's blocked. How big was that? That was huge. Mm. Michael Kidd trying to get it done. Well, you know, if this game comes down to a difference of a point or two, and BJ Little, we will the man on the block. We'll definitely be looking back at this play. And that's Dr. Wiley D. Cat.
one of the more colorful mascots in all the conference, getting his flex on. One minute, 41 seconds left to go in the third quarter. It looks like if this game continues the way it goes, we're going to have one heck of a fourth quarter. Let's take a look at this one more time, Mark. Well, this and I'm talking about the touchdown run, 67 yards on the punt return by Antonio Stanley. Boy, that's, a, that's the cut of life right there. They don't call him Mr. Excitement for nothing. What a charge he has given the Wildcats. And let's face it, I'm impressed for a team that has lost its all-everything player. The MVP of this team, without a doubt, is Patel Troutman. Sure he is. But for them to come back with the tenacity and attitude, if I'm a Wildcat fan, I'm extremely proud of what's happening. And I know the fourth quarter could have an everlasting impression on the outcome of this game. We talked about Antonio Stanley as a punt return threat, averaging almost 14 and a half yards. That time he takes it to the house. We added on to his totals on that one. a and may have given the ball back, Ronnie. They sure did, and I believe it's going to belong to the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman. And there's a reason why they're excited, and Bill Hayes is upset. Turnovers will kill you. That's just a bad decision. Don't feel that ball on the fly. They had a chance of going out of bounds, and you give Bethune-Cookman a confident team who has the momentum all of a sudden, an opportunity to score. Look, that's just a bad decision that time. What was he thinking about was Montre Wiles, the defensive back in there on special teams. Oh, man, what a... What a gaff, a goof off, a blunder. This is a great opportunity to get back into this game. What a touchdown will decide and how a touchdown will change the complexion of this one. Super, back to pass. Super finds a receiver. And that's good for a six-yard gain. And that was Parrish. Parrish does a good job. Safe route, little square route. And that's a confident pass. Super is now playing with a lot of confidence. He said, okay, look, I can make it happen when the pocket collapses. I've got confidence to sit back there right now and survey what's going on. That was like his second or third receiver. He kind of checked down. That was like the third option, and he found him. I'm impressed with the poise, the moxie, and the confidence this kid is showing. Second and four. Super out of the shotgun. Super going deep. Pass incomplete. He was looking for Antonio Stanley, but you know the pressure was there. Massey, number 55, in his face. That's a zone blitz coming right up the middle by the inside linebacker, Massey, and it forced Suber to release that pass earlier. Well, I tell you, Massey's doing a great job just wreaking havoc. If he's not getting the sack or making the stop, He's forcing passes and pressures and deflections and what have you. Those are things that don't necessarily show up in the stat column, but they play such an important role when you're in a game like this. 49 seconds to go just before the start of the fourth quarter. Super, again, out of the shotgun, given time, but that time the defense was there, and Mr. Massey is in his face and on him like white on rice. Boy, I tell you, well, like an Aggie linebacker on a quarterback in this particular instance, once again, zone blitz coming from another hole on the opposite side this time. He gets unabated to the quarterback, and down goes Super. The senior from Charlotte in his final homecoming here in what they call Aggie Land, having a huge game. Massey turning up the big play when called upon. Senior got to step man, up. This is like a boxing match. Oh, this you take your cool. best blow, and I'm going to give you mine. Mm -hmm. And you know, I anticipated this, and this is the kind of game you want. You know, we build it up, we talked about the hype. Timeout right now for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. But this is the kind of game Ronnie. that you knew. I think they blew three timeouts in this quarter, did Bethune. I think that was that third timeout. Wow. That's huge. <laughs> that is huge. That's huge. So how do you play it? Do you play it for the fourth quarter? The ball is on the 28. Yeah, with ten, five seconds to go in the third quarter, you take a You got timeout. 12 yards to go for a first down. What do you do? How do you play it? I think I would have had to let the time click out, and I think I would have probably had to regroup. You know, Patel over there, Troutman, that's him to the left of Coach Wyatt right there, trying to help his understudy in a huge game. And, that, and that's Coach Wyatt getting after one of his assistants. 
for probably not getting a play in there fast enough. Here's our next three games, or at least our next two games, on be at College Football Saturday. November 4th, it's Bethune-Cookman taking on Hampton. How big will that game be? Depends on the outcome of this one. And then North Carolina A&T in Hampton. How big will that be? It could be huge, especially. Talk about something big. Here's the a big Aggies play. Win. Movement on the line, and it looked like it may have been against the Wildcats. Yeah, the defense has the opportunity to move and to get back. Offense has to stay in three-point stance once they're down. And it's against North Carolina A&T, Mark. Wow. Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Can you see the score? 30-19. Six seconds left in the third quarter. You know the fourth quarter will be filled full of fireworks and dramatics. You know, early in the season, we saw a uh, young redshirt freshman quarterback, Tim Frazier, come off the bench against Delaware State for Hampton. Now we're looking at another one. Maybe a star is being born this afternoon here in Greensboro. Two by the shotgun, fourth and seven. Super down the field, and he was looking for Lash. Boy, he had him too. Boy, if he takes a little bit of mustard off of that and lays it in there, Lash not only makes the catch, but he probably takes it to the house. A&T dodges a huge bullet there. Just one second left. The play out. The third quarter. That's right. They'll pick Super up. Look, he has time to set up. Massey once again with the pressure. Forces him to release it a little early with too much juice on it. And now it's up to the Wildcat defense. There is no give. Now we've got another piece of laundry down again. Man, there have been a lot of penalties in this game. No penalty will be enforced at this time. What do you make of that? See, what happened, what happened is, what happened, I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is the end of the third quarter of football. North Carolina A&T is leading at 30-19. We're going to come back with the fourth quarter. You talk about drama for your mama, we got it coming up for you in the fourth quarter. This one's going to go right down to the last bit. North Carolina A&T, homecoming game, and the Aggies lead it. But Bethune-Cookman put some important points on the board in the third quarter, Mark Ray. Well, it's, it comes down to A&T's offensive line having to step up and seize control of this game. They have to impose their will if the Aggies are going to clamp down on this. And, and there you see a gaffe in the offensive front already by the Aggies. It's going to be a situation where concentration will be the key in this game. The all-important fourth quarter. Sure, the Aggies have the lead. Five-yard penalty. Sure, the Aggies have the lead, but let's face it, they don't want to face a team like Bethune Cookman who will try to capitalize on every mistake. Ronnie Duncan, Mark Gray, and Sam Smith bringing you the action. Me at College Football Saturday. Homecoming, North Carolina A&T. Hicks for first down. What a special young man when it comes to carrying the football, Maurice Hicks. Let's take a look at Alzirox stats through three quarters of play of this football game and time of possession. But Bill Cookman has had it, but they don't have the lead. It all belongs to North Carolina A&T, and the reason why rushing yards and that young man has over a hundred of them. Maurice Hicks on North Carolina A&T has gotten totally 148 yards on the ground. Well, you know something when you're getting that kind of offensive productivity, it speaks volumes about the quality of play of the offensive front and the A&T offensive front doing an outstanding job this afternoon. You got a copy on that without Xerox stats. Maurice Hicks, and he gets about three yards on the carry, bringing the ball out at the 40-yard line. And I'm just a little bit amazed that A&T continues to be so effective running the football because Bethune came in as the second leading team in terms of run defense, giving up only 113 yards a game, but 
Mr. Hicks is doing that all by himself right now. They spot the ball at the 39-yard line. It'll be a second down, five yards to go. Mackins, your quarterback. To give the Hicks again. Hicks close to the first down mark. I like the way Bill Hayes spells his back. This is a big kid that runs in a lot of traffic and takes a lot of punishment, so you have to spell him. You bring the L stocks in and, a, and uh, a couple of other kids to just spell him so that right now when you need him to be strong, he's strong right now. And he's. Let's go to the target. Up, oh, scoreboard update. Those Howard University Bison who had me eating crow after they beat North Carolina A&T last week, controlling Norfolk State right now, 14-0 and. Another day at the office for the Morgan State Bears. Down 21 to 10. Just staying with the average. One win a year. As a flag on the play, it was Hicks on the run. Well, I tell you, this Bethune-Cookman crew of linebackers is a great, quick crew. And this sophomore, number eight, Josh Oglesby, playing through a hold, makes a big-time stick on Hicks. Oglesby is a talented holding. Ten yard penalty. Still first down. He's a talented linebacker, and you know something in this particular scheme, he almost plays a lot like Jerron Daly does at Florida AM. Line him up in a variety of different places. They'll drop him back sometime in pass coverage. He's an, uh, just a terror in run support. This guy's a solid, a solid linebacker for another couple of years. Somebody you can anchor your defense around in Wildcat Country. First and 20. Atkins gives the Hicks. And I think we're seeing the emergence of the Wildcat defense start to come alive and say, you know what? We have to stop this nonsense. Well, there was a, I think Matkins stumbled when he was taking the snap from center. And Hicks certainly stumbled as he was getting the ball from Matkins. So that play just was, uh, it stumbled from the start. And that's why they weren't able to pick up anything. And the sheriff getting some advice from his young pupil. Well, that's a great shot right there. Coach listening to the senior who's been through the wars and the just, just discussing it. Of course, I don't think Coach White liked what Troutman had to say that time. Back and rolling out. Finds Helton. Helton turning the corner. Short of first down. And we'll take the ball to the 43. You know, those were the kind of passes early in the game that Troutman was trying to connect with his receivers on, and they were dropping those passes. And we could be talking a totally different game if Stanley and Lash had made a couple of those uh, catches on passes like that and patterns like that early in the first half. So you talk about a huge play right here for the BCC defense. It'll be third and 13. Whoop, here it is. Down by 11, they've got an opportunity to force a punt, which would lead them to have some similar to decent field position. Huge play. I don't think uh, Bethune Cookman was full that time, despite all that was going on. Jimmy Williams, number 48, gets in on the tackle. Watch him here in slow motion. He'll come into your screen, and they were not going with this fake. Jimmy Williams, see him? Number 48. Wrapping the man up, getting some help there from Aaron Shepard. If I'm not mistaken, Ronnie, I think that's the play that they ran earlier, and Hicks broke one for about 40-some yards. That's a good adjustment that time by BCC. Antonio Stanley, he broke off a punt return for 67 yards. Well, this time... He's almost up. broken himself. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. He took the words right out of my mouth. Wow. Maybe in the future, Mathis shouldn't have any blockers with him. We're back to Greensboro. Can the Aggies hold on? Find out in a minute. From Bethune-Cookman is in the NFL Hall of Fame. One of the proud products of MEAC College Football. Yannick Matthews was able to get a 49-yard punt for a little return, if any, from the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, Antonio Stanley. Let's take a look at that last hit, man. And uh, you talk about hits, this, it's up there. This, my friends, is what you call bringing the funk. Hello, good afternoon, and don't expect to hang out at the homecoming dance tonight. Ben Gay, 
will serve you right. 30-19 is our score. 11-27 in the fourth quarter. First and 10. Allen Subra. Pleasant surprise for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. Pass underneath. But it was only for a gain of yep. a yard. If that. Go, you know, the folks in Daytona would hate me to say this, but that's a page out of the Gulf Coast offense. Three-step drop, find your guy across the middle, let him do work after the catch. Nick Leo plan on going down Daytona Beach. No time. <laughs> I'm just saying, saying that, you know, just the point thing of I reference. love about Mark Gray, he's not afraid to speak his mind. Well, you know, like Cosell once said, if I see it, I got to say it. And he's dead. Well, <laughs> apparently you haven't been listening to my radio station show lately. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Antonio Stanley turning up field. First down, Bethune Cookman. Stanley at the 45. That's just a great football play all the way around. You can look at everything on that play, and it was just a great play. Great field generalship by the quarterback who sucked the pressure back to him. He got the pass out with the pressure breaking out. He found the receiver who does an excellent job running after the catch. That's just great football. 15-yard gain to the 45-yard line. Antonio Stanley making it happen. You can look back at a 67-yard punt return. That has turned game, this game around. Number two, he may be little, but he is big when it comes to the scoreboard. Antonio Stanley missed the excitement for Bethune Cookman. Let's pick it up. Ball on the 45. First down. Ten yards to go for a first down. Suber still has it. Suber trying to pitch it off. Suber still has the ball across the 50. This young man is becoming someone special for Bethune Cookman. He, he certainly is, but I tell you, he'll find himself in the doghouse if he doesn't tuck that ball up under his uh, arm and protect it because the Aggie saw it sticking out there and they had their meat cleavers out. Look, it's a headsy move. Blake goes inside of one defender, and see, that time he should have just tucked it in because, boy, Massey and Little were bearing down on him to take him out. He went right out of Timothy Blow's grips. Timothy thought he had him, and Super just kept going. Second down, five yards to go. Ball on the 49-yard line. It's in Aggie territory. Super coming out of the shotgun. Audible lines him. In the backfield, Parrish. Ball bounce, Super. And this time, he loses a yard on the play. Well, that time the freshman quarterback forgot the most important element to making a play work, holding on to the football. And that just gave P.J. Little an opportunity that time. See, look, this is a direct snap. It's a bad snap. It was a horrendous snap. And you're not going to fool P.J. Little. Especially after Darren Herndon, the junior redshirt, with a terrible snap that time. And to make a third and six, ball is placed on the 50-yard line. They were at the 49. But right now, they're 50 yards away from the end zone, a place they secretly want to reach. There's number Stanley. Stanley, first down, Antonio Stanley. Well, they quit counting on me, Ronnie, because I was about to say, let's look for number two, the safety valve. He was a slot on the near side, and he just ran three yards and out and picked up the first down on his own. But let's talk about versatility, and that's something that Bethune-Cookman has displayed today. You're losing Patel Troutman. Yep. You talk about the Wyatt Bone offense, the wishbone. Call it the Wyatt Bone, call it what you want, and yet you're still able to showcase the skills of one Antonio Stanley. But you know what? Antonio Stanley is the fastest man on this team. Eric Lash, number 19, is. Antonio Stanley, again, this time, turning up the field. He gets a five-yard gain, make it six. Antonio Stanley continues to impress. He certainly he does, Ronnie. He is a monster at running after the catch. Watch it. This is a quarterback once again. Just get it out. A little bit of a flanker or a split-in type of screen. He carries it down the far sideline. Nothing fancy about it. Short quarterback friendly passes that get the ball to the receivers in an opportunity that gives them a chance to make something happen after the catch. Driven out of bounds by Mr. Pittman. We talk about rack yards with Florida A&M receivers. We're seeing a guy racking up the yards in Antonio Stanley today. It's second down. Ball on the 32. Four yards to go for a first down. 32 yards away from the end zone. The place the Wildcats want to be. Out of the shotgun. It's the quarterback. Super. He goes and finds a receiver once again. 
You've got Mr. Porter all of a sudden. Can you hear it? Can you, you can hear, hear it? it? They're creeping into the end zone. And it's the got Wildcats have come alive. And, and you can hear it because this crowd is a little nervous right now. I mean, this is a safe pass once again. A little half post, a little hook route, and he just hauls it in. So now suddenly, a confident Bethune-Cookman offense is moving through the air against the A&T defense. And they're only 16 yards away from the end zone. That's why they're undefeated. Coming in 7-0. and Oh, oh intercepted! It's going to be into the end zone! You see it there! Once again, it's Mr. Roy Twyman! Whoa! What a play! What a play is right! You talk about jumping the coverage. That's where a guy has his beat on one receiver, leaves the coverage, steps in front of the receiver to pick it off. That's what Twyman just did, and it brings a look of consternation to the sheriff. Oh! My goodness, 16 yards away from the end zone, and Twyman takes it on the interception. Watch it again. You can see the pressure, and there's Twyman stepping right in front of Antonio Stanley and taking it all the way down to the 17-yard line. The Aggies are stepping it up. This is their house, and nobody is going to rudely knock it down. Well, you know something? That ball was slightly deflected with the pressure coming in there, but that takes nothing away from an outstanding job of timing by timing. Wow! Boy, you talk about drastically changing the direction and complexion of this contest. Roy comes up with a huge play. Wow. Hicks right now. You've got to like it. How? Both teams have yeah. given you everything they have been advertised to do. You speak of good defense, all of a sudden Bethune Cookman started stepping theirs up. But one thing that you know about the Aggies of North Carolina AT, they call it the Blue Death Defense, and they didn't get their name because they haven't buried some opponents. Boy, that was a killer play that time. And Hicks right now just trying to move the chains. AT right now wants to be really cautious with the football here. A, they want to protect it and at least get three points or an opportunity for three points because then it makes it a three-possession game in terms of three scores that you need to even tie. And it may just not be enough time for Bethune-Cookman this afternoon. It's going to bring up a third and eight, though. So it's certainly not a gimme against the second-rated defense in the conference. And, Mark, you can talk about calling for those timeouts in the third quarter, how costly they will be in this game. And I'm sure Coach White is saying, why did I spend all my gold so early. Oh, man. Boy, battled that time, paid the price, and stepping up to deliver the punishment for Bethune-Cookman, Jimmy Williams, the junior redshirt. What? Watch him. Fake, and then he just has his beat on battle, and he locks him up, and he brings him down. Great effort. Darren Dawkins set for another field goal in this game. 35 yards is what we measure it at. He's pretty good from that distance. It would be important to get it. And the kick is no good. All that coming up with nothing. Still leaving the door open. Cracked, however, for Bethune well, Cooker. The crack is closed just a little bit more because they were able to eat up about two minutes. So the one thing you have to keep in mind, not only can Antonio Stanley come back and score on you, he can do it in a fast fashion. We'll come back. Cookman with 6-16 left to go in the game. Me at College Football 2000 is produced by MyTeam.com Productions exclusively for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and its authorized outlets. Any use, reuse, or retransmission of this broadcast without the written consent of the MEAC Commissioner's Office is prohibited. Then Cookman still with a chance. Super flushed out of pocket. Super throws it up. And it's incomplete. That's a out of bounds. That's once again a great job of field generalship by the quarterback. The freshman coming in and just buying himself an extra play, losing no yards by just getting rid of the ball. And B.J. Little, your beast, had a beat on him. Watch the pressure B.J. Little gets this time on Super. See, he's pretty much left to dead to right. Watch this. Just backing up, little half spin move, and he throws the ball away. That's a field general, and that right there is what we call a beast. And I think he's on the all-group team. I sure Can I have a vote for the all-group team? Can I sure help out do. just a little bit? Sure I know it's a, it's a Mark sports group thing, 
<laughs> Ball deflected incomplete. Suber on the seat of his pants, being helped up by his offensive lineman. I'll talk to my boy Tiger Woods to see if Tiger will let you be down. Because if Target lets you get down, then you certainly can't have a vote. I have no say in the matter. Wait a minute, you and Tiger have made up? No, I, the beef I had was with Earl. Oh, with Earl Woods. Right. You know, because I know you can talk to Earl. Telepathically, of course. I know that. What is Earl saying to you right now? Shut up, you idiot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Earl Woods, good advice. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'm only kidding. You know you're my dog, so I got to go ahead and give you much love. <laughs> Always. Third and ten. And there it is. Sack the quarterback. We got you. The sack attack. And baby, you don't do it here. Marvin Lockstock, defensive lineman, 6'4, 265, and Super felt every pound. Boy, he just came on a straight bull rush and he beat his man. And at that point, he was unabated to the quarterback. So the Aggie defense steps up, and that might have been the killer. That may have been the backbreaker this afternoon for Bethune. You know what? On offense, it's MEA, see you later. On defense, it's boom, boom. He shook the room. <laughs> we'll see any kind of uh, funny stuff here. We've got a penalty coming in. Thrown from an official behind Chris Caldwell, who was a single safety. idea that that man right there is not going to take this one lying down. Watch the quick snap here. Coach Wyatt wants his team to get up and get set and get snapped. And Ante has to burn the timeout. And they are going to burn the timeout. A little confused there. What Alvin Wyatt did is that he shifted the offense from one side to another. 30-19. 521 left to go in the game. Will the Wildcats come back? Stick around. We've got more. Proud, what a beautiful day for homecoming. North Carolina A&T, Miak College Football Saturday. Ronnie Duncan along with Mark Gray. Sam Smith on the sidelines. The Aggies of North Carolina A&T currently own it. 30-19, 5-21 left to go. But those tenacious Wildcats just won't give up. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to pull some kind of rabbit out of their hat or something right now. Oh. Mathis back to pass. <laughs> Mathis has a receiver. Can you believe that? Alvin Wyatt pulling a rabbit out of his hat. He does not give up. I talked about it on the reception. You saw Danny Mathis back the pass. He makes sure he finds somebody, and that was Aaron Shepard. Well, you just had a feeling they were going to do something like this. This is a great play. You know, I and it shows guts. This is why this team carries a swagger. This is why they walk into somebody else's house cocky, because their coach has the guts inside his own 20-yard line to go for it on fourth down. That is a gutsy play. And when a play like that is completed, it gives your offense nothing but confidence. Super back to pass. He finds Parrish. Parrish taking it out at the 40-yard line, but they're going to call it at the 39. Well, you know, you come down here for a homecoming game, you want to see family, you want to see pretty people, and you want to see Patel Troutman. But this super kid is a fun kid to watch. I tell you what, a gain of three yards on the play. That'll make it second and seven. And once again, time is not on their side, so they've got to make things happen. 4.48 remaining in the game. North Carolina a t with the lead, 30-19. It's the very best. Me at college football. Super being flushed out of pocket. Super lets it up. And he throws it out of bounds. Boy, I'm just, that was dangerously close to being uh, intentional grounded. I tell you what, he's got a pretty quick trigger. Getting things done and getting rid of them. Got quick feet, too. 
So now Bethune now finds himself in another third and long situation. Pressure from the backside is B.J. Little. Pressure coming up the middle that time was from Gray Massey. So the two seniors, the two bookends in the middle, stepping up, having huge games for a and This game has lived up to the advanced hype. You've got to love it. Me at College Football Saturday, Bethune Cookman. Undefeated prior to the game. Will they stay that way? Super has got to get rid of the football and it's intercepted one more time. Did he make it? One yes, blood. it is. Ahmed Blakeney. Boy, that's the second time he's stepped up and made a big play this afternoon. Super will pick himself up off the dirt. But this play is set up once again by the pressure of a and I mean, they're coming just about every way imaginable. Up the middle, from the back, and the front side. And you guessed it, 38. Little once again, pressure from Rodgers. He has to force a bad pass, which was a dying quail that Blakeney hauls in. See, look, the pressure forces a bad pass, and Blakeney with a great play. You know, Blakeney is so athletic. He may not be the biggest DB out there, but you are not going to intimidate him. And one young man who loves to run the football for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T, Maurice Hicks. The time is winding down. It is 4.20 and some change. 30-19 is the score. North Carolina A&T perhaps can control his own destiny for a possible regaining of the MEAC championship. They are 5-2 coming into this game, losing a big game last week to Howard. What a great way to get back on the winning track by winning at home on homecoming against the previously undefeated Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Battle still on his feet. Battle musters about five yards on the play. So that's going to set up a very interesting contest next week. Just how, what kind of physical shape will Bethune-Cookman be in going up to Hampton, arguably the most physical team in the conference, say for A&T. Next week, you know, it doesn't get any easier for him. And you know, Cash has really turned his, his whole season around. I mean, when we saw them, it looked like he might have been out as quarterback. This young man has played huge. Then when you consider Montreal Coley and, of course, some of the fine receivers they have on that team, it's going to be interesting to see. That's next week on MEAC College Football Saturday. Battle still with the ball. Battle turning the corner. It's a first down for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Battle brought down at the 25-yard line. And you know what Bill Hayes is going to do. Run that clock on down. 3.09 remaining in this football game. We're glad you've stayed with us for MEAC College Football Saturday. Saturday. It has been a fun time down in Greensboro, North Carolina. A great crowd coming to see the game. An excellent NUE halftime show, also sponsored by Greyhound. It's been fun all the way around. And you know what? When you speak of Mr. Hicks, he continues to impress you. Don't forget next week, we will see Bethune Cookman. Will they lose two games in a row? We'll find out when they take on Hampton for their homecoming at a special time of 3.30 right here on MEAC College Football Saturday. Look at that. It's Hicks on his feet. Hicks still moving. Hicks ain't playing around. Uh-uh. Hicks ain't playing around. You know what? There's something hot in here. It must be Maurice Hicks in the atmosphere. Well, the bottom line is time to start dusting off the dancing shoes and start making plans for later on this evening because you can just put a fork in this one. A&T came out and delivered a blow, and, and the key to this game is and they still to the challenge, Mark, because yeah. of the simple fact that in the third quarter, it is 30-19, right. and let's face it, Alvin Wyatt was trying to pull every rabbit out of his hat imaginable, but the one thing you cannot deny is this tremendous defense you and I have seen too many weeks in and out of North Carolina A&T. Yeah. It does not get the nickname of Blue Death because it sounds good. They make it good. And they came up with a big performance. They made big plays when they had to. And, you know, in all honesty, seven of those points come off the board because they were given up by special teams. And you, you look at another one of those scores Good that was point. set up by a, a, a fumble situation. So this has been a, another stellar defensive performance. And they got an L last week. But the defense, you know, it took a fluke play to beat them. North Carolina a t is going to win homecoming. They will improve to 6-2 and two overall. Meanwhile, Bethune Cookman will lose its first game of the season. Now let's take a look at our Marine Corps players of the game. And who are they? It's pretty easy. All you got to do is look at who they are. Chris Caldwell, number four, and Antonio Stanley. Chris Caldwell playing a huge game. Of course, both of these men ran back, returns, and they got it done. Rare is it that you get one kickoff return or punt return in the game for a score. You got two of them. 
Hicks, 30 carries, 168 yards on the day. Wow. It's amazing when you can run 168 and not get the Marine player of the game. But you know what? You got to spread the wealth around, and that's something they do so well. <laughs> it's hard to bring a good man down, and obviously Mr. Battle's a good man. Time is winding down on the clock. We've got less than 40 seconds to go in this football game, and it's going to be another victory for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. So right now, the MEAC standings look like this. Bethune-Cookman moves a 4-1. Hampton right now is the only undefeated team in the conference, while FAMU comes into today's game 5-1, and, and North Carolina A&T moves a 4-1 in the conference. So the Aggies now move to 6-2 and two overall. And remember, as far as the Division I AA polling was concerned, the Aggies and Bethune-Cookman were 23rd and 24th, so chances are the Aggies are going to move up in the poll. It's been a lot of fun. I'm Roddy Duncan for Mark Ray and Sam Smith on the sideline. Final score today 30 to 19 North Carolina A&T is going to once again be a big time winner only six seconds left on the clock we encourage you we ask you please tell everybody join us next week for a great and exciting game because we're going to be down in Hampton Virginia as the Pirates and you don't want to miss the number one score in the country Montrell Coley is averaging well over 100 yards a game but more importantly Montrell Coley is averaging 16.5 points a game college football did they even have a hampton basketball player average over 16 points in basketball montrell coley is a one-man wrecking machine he's rushed for over 200 yards so many times during the season so once again make sure you watch it it's going to be great bethune cookman taking on hampton next week goodbye everybody i'm ronnie duncan for mark gray and sam smith me at college football saturday it was the aggies winning the homecoming 30 to 19. so long everybody Guess what, folks? I wanted to send us home, but there's two seconds left to go in this one. Is this going to be the never-ending game? It's academic. Let the clock just simply run out. Like these two seconds are going to be the decisive factor in the game. And Hampton has the early lead right now, three to nothing over FAMU. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the end of the day. 3019, it's been a great homecoming. If you haven't been to Greensboro in a long time and you're a product and a graduate, North Carolina AT, you're going home with some bragging rights. Not only did you see your alma mater win, you saw him win in a dramatic game. You're absolutely right. There's nothing more to say, I mean, you know? I mean, I, I, at the risk of making an official look bad, you don't need this. And sooner or later, somebody's going to get hurt. And I, I just hate this, man. You talk about a pet peeve that gets up under my skin. You're up by 10 points. There's no time. There's no need for this play. None whatsoever. Somebody will get hurt, and it'll cost the season, and, and, and then they're going to change the rule. It's terrible, man. Absolutely terrible. They're upset. You said it so eloquently, too. That's what I enjoy. I'm just sorry, man. The steam's coming off your head. But it's a point well taken. I, I, it, it is absolutely ridiculous. If the, if you can't, there is no 11-point play in football. And there's our final play of the game. And Rogers. The interception. <laughs> Sammy Rogers with the interception. Well, once again, I'm Roddy Duncan for Mark Gray and Sam Smith, who did an outstanding job. Final score. It's official now. 30-19, North Carolina A&T. We'll see you again next week in Hampton.